Apologies. That's all right. <laughs> Hello then, welcome back to another episode of Geordie Media with your hosts Ben and Paul. Today, as ever, we've got news, a review of an awesome movie, and a little little game to play. So yeah, um, over to you, Ben, with your news. I just like it. And an awesome movie to review. <laughs> <laughs> It is. First bit of news. Well, it, it's a movie. It's, oh, it's a movie. <laughs> For sure. I suppose it's ironically awesome. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the first bit of news, I actually haven't wrote this down, actually. I've just remembered this. Is um, like Gran Turismo 7's getting a lot of backlash. Um, I don't know if you've seen about the uh-huh. microtransaction system. So basically, previously, you could earn cars in game, but then you could also buy them with microtransactions to cut out, you know, the grind of earning them. But for some reason, a car that's been in previous games is now trying to reflect its kind of real world pricing. <laughs> so it was in game credit wise, it was like a, a million credits, and now it's 18.5 million credits, <laughs> just like one game later. But then, so the, somebody worked it out, and it's like you have to like play for like roughly thir- between 30 and 90 hours, depending on how good you are. Yeah. Or you could pay for it in like in real world money. It would be literally 94 pounds, which is more than the game itself for one car. <laughs> so that's getting a lot of backlash. And then we're still, it's also limited time as well. So you can only get it for the next six days. <laughs> so like just put 90 hours in for the next six days. Just do a full a two work weeks in one week. <laughs> that's absolutely <laughs> mental. I mean, did they not learn? I mean, I know it's a different um, company, but yeah. did, did they not learn with Star Wars Battlefront Two? Like when yeah, I thought, I thought we were beyond this. Yeah, it's absolutely. <laughs> so you've got to pay ninety six pound or put in ninety hours. So it's basically over a week. You are literally playing nothing but that game to get this call. If you don't mm-hmm. want to do that, you've got to pay real world money. Mm-hmm. I, 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 it's so. And it's... I mean, people people defend it. That's why it's still yeah. prevalent. Because That's what's insane. Is I've seen I've seen a comment. It's one of those ones. that's like of all the hills to die on. But like, one of the comments was something like, "Well." It's um, such an expensive car, and it's like they, they try to compare it to a Hot Wheel, like you know, like the the toy cars. Yeah. It's like, well, the Hot Wheels is like this much, blah blah blah, and it's like, and and so well, it's like playing with your own Hot Wheels. Well, if that's expensive, why wouldn't this be expensive? But I'm like, but with the Hot Wheel, you're getting a tangible item. Yeah. You, that you, you can keep forever. forever. Yeah. This is a digital item that's infinitely <laughs> <laughs> like re- replicable. Is that the word? Yeah. Like they could just replicate it in infinitely yeah. forever. Um, and also, it's on a server, so the game's always online anyway. Like, that's get, it's getting a bit of backlash for being an always online game because you can, like, play one mode or one race currently or something yeah. offline. And people are like, eh, that's insane. So, like, imagine you buy that car and then they turn the servers off. Yeah, well, that, well that's it. I could still have me Hot Wheels. <laughs> but those, those people are probably the same people are like, well, who wants to play old games on a new console? Well, you, because you spent 98 quid on a, on a car digitally. That's like me going to my kids. Like, well, I, I was going to get you some Hot Wheels, but instead I bought this digital car you can only play for the, the next yeah. three years until we buy a new console. It's absolutely <laughs> exactly. mental, man. I don't it's, understand it's... the logic. It plays into their hands perfectly as the developers because it's just money. You know what I mean? It's just pure money and it's artificial scarcity. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like, you know, for a fact, and I, I know this in like, because I was quite big into the COD games, obviously, um, in the past few years and stuff. And it's like, they'll release a skin, for example, and then take it out of the store, but then it comes back eventually. So that car will come back. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's artificial scarcity because people are panicking like i need to get it in the next six days i guarantee it might take six months but i guarantee they'll put that car back in the store but hopefully from this backlash they'll just either keep it permanently in the store or lower the cost drastically yeah but i just i i mean i've been i've been guilty of it in the past i have bought skins in games before and when you think about it like when you think about it in like a monetary sense they aren't worth anywhere near as much as the cost do you know what i mean so like if a game's 60 pounds one skin shouldn't be 20 pounds well, that's you know it, yeah. it shouldn't be a third of the cost essentially well i mean whether you said like the scarcity of it all um though on fortnite because a, a while back i was really into fortnite playing with the kids and yeah. stuff there was a venom skin and it was like <laughs> yeah only, that, only, that's only your lie and you're sticking to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah play, play with the kids the soon kids you don't it. have children i do yeah. <laughs> i do I just I, I do in my mind but yeah anyway so um i i got the venom skin and it was like 14.99 
because I was yeah. like, oh my god, it's going to go in a couple of days, and it was wicked, and it, and you could transform like the the person from like Tom. I Hall seen it. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Like, yeah. and I thought, well, I, I want that. Obviously, the price was ridiculous, um, but I got it anyway. And then I was like, oh, it's cool. Like, only a handful of people have this. And then a couple of weeks later, I was back in the store. I was like, well, <laughs> you said I had a week or four days or whatever. It, n- like it's just ridiculous. That I yeah. think that's that's some bullshit. I've never done it since. Like I've never done. I it don't. Since. I don't understand. Like, well, I understand it in the sense of it's it's fucking shan. You know what I mean? So I understand it in the sense of they're being absolutely um, harsh dickheads by being like, "Hey, we're, we're going to take it away forever," which means you know it feels good to the people who have it because it feels that, like I say, artificial scarcely making it artificially rare. Yeah. But like, I just think from a logical standpoint, like if you make good content, it should just be always available for you to buy. Like, well, that's it. I would hate, I would hate to get into a game today. For example, like, in fact, actually, I was thinking about this recently. Is I really like looter shooters. So like, um, obviously, Borderlands was like my is like my favorite. I fucking love the Borderlands games. Like, um, I've, I've played a lot of the other ones. Uh, I really like the Division Two. Uh, I like the Division One. Um, I was looking at Destiny, and I'm like. I didn't get into Destiny 1, but Destiny 2, I have played it, and the controls are amazing. Like, I love the actual shooting in it. But there's, like, so much to... You're, like, so far behind in the game, and there's so much that you cannot get now. And Yeah. Like, there's certain bits of content that are, like, they've taken them away and vaulted them. Whereas I understand it in, like, a Battle Royale where, like, say, Fortnite or COD or PUBG will be, like, we're vaulting this weapon because we're cycling something in. And having too many because it's kind of like having too many guns on a certain map it's hard to balance right so yeah. i understand being like all right well we've got 40 guns in so we're gonna take one out and keep it at 40 guns you know what i mean like i understand in that sense but um like something cosmetic to take something out that like, i would hate to be playing a game and like have someone have a gun where i'm like i could never ever get that gun because i started a year too late yeah or, I, I or in this that. case or in this case, in a game that, like, say, like Gran Turismo, which just come out, not everyone can get the game the day they come out. Do you know what no, I mean? So sometimes, it. sometimes you could be the you could be a big fan of a game, but you still get it a month later. So imagine getting Grand Theft Auto like in two weeks' time, which is a total reasonable time frame to get the game, considering it's just come out, and then you cannot get that car now. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, yeah. I'd be like, what? I but, just paid yeah. seventy quid, and some and people will. Yeah, some people will want that exact car for 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 whatever reason, and buy the game for that, and then they go on. And it's like, oh well, it's not there anymore because we, we took it away. And so the thing is, it's, it's like you life. literally have you literally have the car in the files as well. So it's like it's like DLC now. So a lot of the time, that when when a new expansion pack comes out for a game, you actually download it. It's an update, and then you just have to pay to unlock it. But if you don't unlock it. It still is taking up some space of your hard drive. Do you know what I mean? Because I hate when you buy buy a pack of something and it's instantly available, which is like, it's the opposite of what you want. I should be happy for the convenience of it being instantly available when I bought it. But I feel like I bought nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, mean? I feel like I, I'm, I already had it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. I'm not yeah. into pirating, but part of us is like, God, I wish I could just illegally <laughs> unlock that considering I already have it using well, that's it. space. That's it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Definitely, it's it's terrible. I hate stuff like that. Yeah, but hopefully, like you say, there'll be some sort of change of heart, maybe or back. Well, I, I think what the personally I think is the the do it on purpose. Hmm. Get a bunch of people who'll just happily buy it because there is people out there. I know people who pay oh, God, football yeah. packs year in year out for FIFA. Oh God, yeah. And they'll get a lot of money, and then they'll, you'll get the people who you know complain, and then they go right now we'll lower it and then we'll we'll be loaded as heroes like oh they've yeah. listened well no they haven't they were always going to do this they've took your yeah. money they've took all those people's money it's also a bit of publicity for them isn't it well that's it yeah and it's like oh that's cool they've put the price down on this oh well i'm going to buy the game now so it's, again it's even more money i think it's done i think since battlefield 2 it's it's been done like that because like um the Shadow of War game, it was exactly the same. You could unlock yeah. stuff, and they were like, "Oh well, now we're lowering the price, and now it's one of the things I hear free. is I think was it Shadow of Mordor did it, and um, or Shadow of War, sorry, and then um, I think the Assassin's Creed games have been doing them where they literally release the game, wait till all the reviews are out, and then they open that microtransaction store like a month later. Yeah, I think shady, that's man. so shady, yeah. and it's because the no, because the game is not as relevant a month later. 
chances are the news story isn't going to get the same kind of clicks. So somewhere like GameSpot is less likely to re-review a month later yeah. because they're not going to get the clicks. So it's not worth the time to re-review. Well, that's it, but yeah. obviously they might have give a game an eight where like you know they might go well. Actually, I'm going to give it a seven because I'm like you know how egregious the story is. Yeah, like, for sure. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Resident Evil have started doing that, but it's like months down the line where it's like a key unlock, so you can unlock all the weapons um right all unlimited weapons and that's i think that's fair enough because people there's people like me who'll play resident evil back to front and mm-hmm. will complete on everything get the, the best ranks get all the guns all the outfits what have you and then there's people who play the game like once and then think oh, i want to play it but i don't want to do it again so they, they pay like 2.99 for the complete unlock for everything yeah. which i think is I, i'm yeah i'm i'm obviously like I'm full-time employed. I understand that someone has a a finite amount of time, you know what I mean, between working and your relationships and whatever you've got to do. It's like, I understand that, but it's it's the cost ratio that offends us. Do you know what I mean? So it's more like... Like I say, two ninety nine. I remember, I think it was a Battlefield 3 was the first time they did it. I might have been... Might have been Bad Company too, but in one of the Battlefield games, the first time they did it, they did like a um, gun unlock pack, exactly the same. So you, instead of grinding for the guns, you know, like the gun, yeah. the gun you'd get at level forty, you could just buy all of the guns. But right. the and and a lot there was a, there was backlash at the time, but they weren't crazily priced. It wasn't like more well, than the price it, yeah. of the game. Well, and it, also yeah. like just the terms of the item. <coughs> I would say, I would say the items a skin's not worth fifteen pounds realistically, even though I've bought skins for that um, amount. Yeah. But fifteen pounds is massively different than getting one skin because that's essentially what this new car is. It's a, it's a car skin, isn't it? Let's be yeah. Honest. Well, that's it. Yeah. So like, get, getting this one skin for ninety pounds—that's insane. It's and it's crazy. Fifteen pounds, I think, is too yeah. much because that's like a third of the price of the game. <laughs> anyway, this is more than the price of the entire game. <laughs> well, yeah, it's absolutely you know I mean? mental. Yeah, and it's like does and and that and if that's one skin, that means that there's more coming. <laughs> oh, for sure. 100. And if you paid that 90 quid, like, in six days, I presume that's refreshing to another 90 quid car, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you might have paid 90 quid every six days. Yeah. You know? Which give away your money, man. Just, we're, we're heroes. Give away your money. Yeah. I'm just surprised, like, but I think as well, I think a big part of it is, obviously, we've had all that backlash from, you know, Battlefront 2 and whatnot. And, but I think people were more surprised to see it come from PlayStation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Course, or a PlayStation yeah. exclusive roller. Yeah. So the next bit of gaming news is uh, Supermassive Games, um, uh, creators of um, the horror series, the Dark Anthology Pictures, and Until Dawn, have revealed their new game, The Quarry. Yes, um, which just looks fucking brilliant. It's oh, just, it is. it's, it's the the thing is, is like uh, my girlfriend loves that series. I loved Until Until Dawn, but I couldn't get into like the Dark Pictures anthology as much. I think it was just kind of. It wasn't a gameplay issue. It was the sentence. The sentence of some of them just didn't interest us. Yeah, Do you know same. what I mean? I was the same. Um, so this is obviously not part of that like trilogy or anthology, um, and it's a known standalone game. And it, like I say, it looks like a spiritual successor, doesn't it? It, it does, has that yeah. vibe of Until Dawn, where, but this time it's like kind of a teen camp slasher. Yeah. It has a really good cast as well. I, I didn't think I'd be this hyped for it, but I was just like, oh yeah, it's like basically made until dawn 2 haven't well, they? Uh, yeah <laughs> oh, that's what it looks like you know what i mean, I, mean and, you know. I was late to playstation so i didn't play it until dawn until i think a year after it came out yeah um and i was like hooked on it it was really really good and uh, like the twist i mean obviously i won't spoil it for people who haven't played yeah. it but like the twist really got us i was like oh that's really yeah. cool i like that Same, like, i didn't say coming like yeah yeah, so I'm really hyped for this game, but like the Dark Anthology ones, I think it's the second one, Little Hope. That's yeah. the one that appeals to me the most out of all of them. Yeah. I've played some of the first. I haven't played Little Hope, and I, there's a third one, and it was like Army Soldiers in a Cave or something like that. I haven't played that one. <laughs> Army Soldiers. Army Soldiers in a Cave, <laughs> the game. That's, I'm sure that's what it's called, Army yeah, Soldiers I'd... in a Cave. Oh, yeah, I think that, that was it, yeah. I would yeah. play that. Army yeah, Soldiers, Army Soldiers in a Cave. Game. Isn't that Soldiers just every game. Call of Duty? <laughs> it is, yeah. Have you played Army Soldiers <laughs> in a Cave? I have, yes. Yeah. With my £93 fucking Hot Wheels skin. Yeah, yeah really man, definitely. <laughs> so the cast's really great as well. So yeah. obviously David Arquette being the biggest name. Yeah, man. Um, f- so for me personally, anyway, he's the biggest name. Yeah. Apparently it's starring um, Ted Raimi. So I presume that's Sam Raimi's brother. It is, yeah. Because, it is. <laughs> but I, d- I have no idea what he looks like. <laughs> so um, when I see that, I'm like, I presume he's a name, but that means nothing to me. Yeah. Um, he was in an episode of Supernatural. Do you know the one where the wishes come true? He's the the loser oh, okay. who gets the like really pretty girlfriend. 
Wait, I don't yeah. know if you can remember what he looks like. I do, that. yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's him. But, ah, um, okay. yeah, I mean, well, yeah, David, like David it's, Arquette. It's got a very uh, full nerdy cast, doesn't it? Yeah, it like, has. Like, David, I mean, I've liked David Arquette in the Scream movies. I don't think I've seen him in anything else. But in the last Scream movie, which I'm not going to spoil, obviously, like, I loved his character. And I was like, they could yeah. really tell an amazing story with him. And now, after the film, I was like, I want to see him have his revenge, like, old man revenge movie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that would be class. So I'm yeah, glad to say that he's, got he's it in, in it. Yeah. I think this would be class, like, having him in the game. I'm, I'm super excited for it. Like, I really am. Yeah. Can't wait to get so... my hands on it. Uh, but like I say, I'm totally sold on that. And I think it's it looks like a return to form for the series. And I think when he did it, because like I say, I felt like Until Dawn was just this absolute standout game. And then he got like three mediocre games straight well, that's it, yeah. After. yeah. I think they doubled down too much, kind of, because they announced it straight away. It's a trilogy as well. And I was like, all right, you've had one hit. Let's settle yeah, let's, let's, let's down. Let's you know, just well, like, has the trilogy. I'm like, did I ask for a trilogy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a band when they release one album and they release their greatest hits afterwards. Like, but it's the same <laughs> album. You've just changed it slightly. It's like yeah. uncut versions of songs. I hate, I hate when, the, when any band just does, like the album's done well. So it's normally when it hits like some milestones, like, oh, it's platinum now or whatever. Yeah. Then they re release it and it's the exact album. But then there's <laughs> one new song. Yeah. And then the whole album played live. Like, well, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. It's like there's 40 no tracks and you're like, you mean the same 12 <laughs> tracks twice? Like, a couple of times. Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, mathematically, that made no sense. I was going to say it made it. no sense mathematically, but I get what you meant. <laughs> it's, it, it, but they do, like, remember U2's free album that like, they forced upon you. Do you know what I mean? Nobody yeah. wanted oh, that. Oh, God. Like, that, like, no, they're showing your age now. Yeah, oh, definitely no. Definitely showing your age. Me age like, yeah, me. back back in the days of iPods. Yeah, when everyone was uh, or, or the early iPhones, and everyone yeah. was forced to install. What was that album even called? I forgot now. Yeah, please listen to this album. It's free. I think. I mean, the thing is, as well as obviously, like everyone, or not everyone, but like obviously, I, I like a few of the iconic U2 songs. I wouldn't say I ever listened to them, to be honest. Nah, but they've same. got a few songs where I'm like, oh, that's a good song, actually. Yeah. Um, but God, that was so, so weird. Yeah, it was like, like... Well, I think, to be fair, in my defense, I think it was trying to be a bit more altruistic. I'm like, yeah, hey, we're given. That because they were, all, they all, they're already mega rich. Yeah. So, like, they're, it's almost the antithesis to Metallica because Metallica's kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> we want paid for anyone who even fucking taps their feet in the rhythm of one of our yeah. songs. <laughs> but I mean, I understand it to an extent, but that's like me having all the food in the world and then walking around and just pushing yogurts in people's mouths. I'm like, well, eat this yogurt then. Like, they put it on your phone. <laughs> they put it on. Yeah. It wasn't an option. It was like, take this music for free. Do you know what I mean? So it's like me walking around and just like spoon feeding yogurt. In the oh, God. Like, it was the wrong thing to do. But I think they were trying to go for altruistic yes, reasons. Yes. Yes. It, it just, it was, it was such a hilarious universal <laughs> backfire. <laughs> it was like but yeah what was so what news was that's... point anyway um yeah that game i'm excited for it yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're moving on swiftly <laughs> <laughs> so news you you'll be interested in is there's a new obviously live action resident evil series which is coming to netflix and they've announced it's coming on july 14th yeah i can't and, wait uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know you know your iconic characters chris redfield claire redfield jill valentine leon you know i could go on no, no, mm -hmm. it's about Wesker's three daughters. You know, you know those three daughters in <laughs> the games that are yeah, like, just no. in the background. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why are they making so many mistakes? I mean, you could just literally sit and drink here. Yeah. This is going to be my twenty-minute rant on Resident Evil. Oh God, Evil. yeah. <laughs> That's why I wrote. I, I was like, yes. This is why I'm. I'm off. I'm off. I'll just go for a walk. Ben's just going to leave for an hour and come back, and then he, as he sits down, I'll be like, and that's how I feel about this situation. It's been three hours. And I'm like, um, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, they haven't done Resident Evil right. This last movie, they got some of it right. But it was like, do you know yeah. those three iconic games you love? Well, we're going to cram all of that into one movie with none of the good stuff that you like, except maybe yeah. one thing. So they, I've got no hype for this this show whatsoever. Why has Wesker got three kids? Why isn't it about the outbreak in Raccoon City? Why? Just, yeah. It's like when TV shows put Batman in their shows, but not really. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm watching Titans, <laughs> yeah. and, and Bruce Wayne's there, but he never suits up. It, yeah. It, you're Batman! This crime! <laughs> Be Batman! No, no, it's like, well, this is Resident Evil, but it's kind of not. It's just, it's a... Uh, I'll, I'll say no thing, more. <laughs> I think the thing is, is uh, for me, it's the uh, Batman's kind of like the perfect parallel, is that normally we get shitty origin stories that we've already seen a million times. Like, I don't need the Batman origin story, really. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've had it. 
which I think is why is the Batman so good because it's it's not his first year as Batman. Although yeah. this Batman was so cool, obviously I'd love to see that first year, but like you don't need it. You don't need to see his parents die again when no his well, parents die. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where, Whereas I feel like with Resident Evil, we haven't had a good enough origin no, story yet. We haven't. So it's weird that they're trying to tell other stories and they kind of want to skirt around it. I'm like, just tell the story of Resident Evil 1. Just yeah, do that. It's a film. Practically scene by scene. Just don't have it, you know, well, having a it. lot of getting lost and, you know, do animations. Just yeah. cut that out. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, just cut out the, like, painting, it, like, puzzles and shit. But they had three movies in one when they could have had three fucking movies the first one yeah ties into the second it could be like a mid credit scene and it's showing you leon going to work his first day and then the second movie starts and the third movie it's jill again being chased by nemesis like why didn't you do that you basically had yeah. three movies that's money in the bank do you know what i mean yeah. I, I still went to see the movie but it was okay like i don't care about the characters being different from that from that that the, the game characters I, I don't care about any of that i just yeah. wanted a good story and it was just like well we're going to put it all in into one movie and blow up Rackham city and you're not going to see nemesis or tyrant and i just just stupid man just absolutely yeah. stupid so it's yeah, just weird hyped. because they just they just seem to like cash in on a franchise but then don't do right by anyone so like the casual doesn't enjoy it and then the fans well, don't it. enjoy it that's exactly <laughs> that's like, exactly it's it, like yeah. it's like lose lose i, I just yeah. don't understand S- a similar situation is um obviously they're making a halo tv show yeah um, and one of the, one of the showrunners stephen kane's come out and said uh we didn't look at the game we didn't even talk about the game we talked about the characters in the world so i never felt limited by being a game and everyone's like lost their mind because they're just like what what do you mean you didn't look at the game or <laughs> didn't <laughs> So, it doesn't make sense though no. because it's a statement because i've seen obviously that there's images online of the of the actual show and uh-huh. obviously he looks exactly like master chief mm-hmm. how would they know what he looks like if they didn't use the source material well that's well that's, I don't, that's the logic i don't understand like it's one or the other they use the source material but they cram so much in or they don't and it's just mm-hmm. like well it's halo but we're not going to do anything about the games it's going to have none of the other characters and he's going to work in a starbucks but it's still halo because he's wearing that outfit like just yeah i, I don't what's, know I'm... what's so strange to me is that like obviously tv and streaming is like a much broader audience than gaming so i would say ga- gaming is obviously massive and possibly even a bigger audience yeah but i would say it's a broader audience tv shows you know what i mean so like even if you're not a fan of video games you might watch a video game movie because you didn't know anything well, about the it, video yeah. game you just seen it was a movie or you just seen it was a tv show so it's so strange to us to not tell that st- to not tell the actual source story yeah. <laughs> do you know what i mean because like to go like oh well that story's already told in the games like, but not everybody games so like my mom would watch tv she might watch it she wouldn't game though <laughs> well that's it yeah I mean? and i mean so like good so you should be just tell. telling the actual good story to the people who, well, that's it. <laughs> and the people who love it would love seeing the story that they loved realized on screen <laughs> well yeah i mean well that's exactly i mean like don't get us wrong with like the walking dead i think they've done a terrible job of telling the story of the walking dead oh god yeah yeah uh, mm-hmm. but i'm more excited for the spin-offs for that show because they can go in any direction they want but if you've already got like really great material and you can follow it as close to the letter as you possibly can like with like the last of us mm-hmm. or i mean I, I, i've played like half an hour of halo once do you know what i mean so i yeah. don't know anything about the story but even i know it's a bad idea to be yeah, so far away from the source material like follow mm-hmm. as closely as you can if the story is stellar just mm-hmm. stick to it what a chances are the story doing a good job chances are the story is stellar because it wouldn't be getting a tv show if it wasn't <laughs> you know I mean? mm-hmm. it's like the bioshock stuff like that's such a linear linear like story it's like if that if they divulge way too far from that it's gonna be shite well that's it yeah <laughs> I mean? like i want to say that actual story do you know what i mean yeah but if, if they go oh we're just telling the story of rapture before it um yeah like, they do that as well I don't before understand. everyone like before everyone went insane and you yeah. know I mean? like so what we're not going to say any of the cool shit no 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 we're <laughs> just going to tell a story about an under, underwater city and the politics of it all yeah, yeah but nobody probably, wants that they yeah, probably but, would do yeah, that exactly that i It'll mean be it's like, like game gotham. of thrones but in rapture yeah but like gotham it was like well do you know batman that character you love well it's how you meet all of his villains yeah but we want batman <laughs> though nah you just want his villains though don't you no we want batman we're telling it, you it is Us, the it fans, is so want weird batman. It's, it is so weird that you see them become the the villain like so early on 
Yeah. And then you don't say Batman. Well, like, <laughs> Does he sue up at the very end? I'd, yeah, I'd, the I'd very obviously last lost interest episode. after like two seasons. Yeah. At the very last... I mean, I didn't watch it all. I literally lost yeah. interest in the second season. And then yeah. I watched like episodes where people are like, oh my God, this episode for the Joker, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, but spoilers. Yeah, yeah, spoilers. <laughs> uh, he's not even called the Joker though. He's called Jerome yeah. and they don't call yeah. him the Joker. So... Um, he suits up, but you only ever see him in shadow, and then you see him at the last minute create the Joker, who's already been the Joker for yeah. years. For years. <laughs> but Batman is the reason behind all of these villains. Do you know what I mean? That that's the the thing about the comic book. The Batman, the Joker only exists because of the Batman. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But they had the they had Mister Freeze, they had Zaz, they they had all these characters without Batman. And I mean, I'm starting to think now, maybe it's just because I really want a Batman movie, because that's all I seem to be talking about. Everything yeah. you bring up, I'm like, it was the Batman though! Yeah, but in relation to Batman, no, but that was it's just so stupid to be like, like, it wasn't Penguin, Penguin within about like six episodes or something, and it's yeah. just like, so he's been Penguin for years, but Batman, oh yeah, you don't get to see Batman. Yeah, that's <laughs> see it. Batman for fucking... Like, ridiculous? So I'm pretty sure... Actually, that, that, that'll tie well. quite nicely into um, one bit of Batman news. Um, which is um, the making a comic Riddler Year One, and which is actually going to be written by Riddler from the movie, um, oh. the star Paul Demo, yeah. which I think is dead interesting that he's writing. It's going to be like a um, six issue miniseries uh, starting in October, oh, which nice. I think is cool. Uh, like obviously an origin story or Riddler Year One, which I think could be really fucking interesting to be honest. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think what obviously, I, I mean, I don't know, but I, in my opinion, what would be good is if you see like. The Batman through the Riddler's eyes, like he's mm-hmm. like he says in the movie. Oh, well, actually, I can't say that because it's a spoiler. But like he mentions something to the, um, the Batman, and he's like, "You are this, and I am that, and this is why mm-hmm. I'm doing what I'm doing. You're doing that." Blah blah blah. So yeah. I think it would be cool to see the Batman for, through his, his eyes and like him become the Riddler. I think that would be quite yeah. an interesting take. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I think like I said, it's very unique and and st- strange though, like that he's writing it. Oh yeah, just for sure. Because. Just because it just seems so out of the blue, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean he, he, he didn't cool. embody the character. To be fair, yeah, he, obviously he's, he's like reading somebody else's lines. As far as I'm aware, I don't know if he just ad libbed most of his stuff, but I, I don't yeah. think so. But um, I mean he did a good job. But whether he's going to be able to write a story and be as compelling, I, I don't know. But I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll 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 read it like definitely. And so from one comic book news to a comic book movie news, comicbook.com, actually, the website, have quoted uh, Jared Leto saying um, that Marvel movies basically have saved cinema. So he said, if it wasn't for Marvel movies, I don't even know if theatres would exist. It doesn't seem like there's room for everyone, and it does start to become a little heartbreaking. I also have gratitude for these movies because they seem to be keeping cinema alive. And I just thought, that's very interesting. What do you think on that? Yeah. I mean, I don't like to agree with anything Jared Leto says because he's Jared Leto. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> because of the, the Jared Leto I mean, role, I mean... Obviously, starring in Morbius as a vampire is his perfect role because he's looked oh, undead yeah. for fucking years, he has, doesn't like, he? He has. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody goes to a Marvel movie, but, but, but there's so many of them, so I mean, yeah, I mean, he's kind of right because we're mm. like, what, 10, 15 years into the Marvel Cinematic Universe and they've mm. had four bad movies like from my opinion anyway i mean like, i start i started working in summer a few years ago when um when i was 31 i think and i worked for like three years in the cinema um and i remember when i started the actual manager said it was he didn't think cinema would still be open at this time and he'd worked he was like the manager who'd worked there for like 15 20 years yeah like, i think he was still surprised it was still going um and then my experience in those three years is that cinema is literally 80% dead or or it's dead 80% of the time and then it's only busy when really big movies and those big movies unfortunately are, well not unfortunately for Marvel not unfortunately for Marvel but they are when it's a Marvel movie or unfortunately when it's a Jumanji or a Fast and Furious do you yeah, know what I mean well, like, that's uh, the uh, only time they're like slightly busy to the point where like they're barely turning profit you know yeah I mean? oh yeah I agree I mean like if it's a big franchise movie, I think, yeah, it is. Like, with the Marvel movies, there's so many of them now that people are invested. So even if it's a bad one, like, is it The Eternals? I haven't seen mm-hmm. it, but a lot of people hate that movie. Um, they'll turn up just to see mm-hmm. a mid credit scene or an end credit scene that's going to, like, go on to Phase 6 or whatever we're into now. So I think he is right to, to some degree because it's always... Like, if a Terminator movie came out now or a Lethal Weapon movie came out now, 
it wouldn't see anywhere near the numbers of like yeah. th those franchise movies. It would just be like f old fans or I mean, I, I, I love the Terminator, me... but I haven't seen a Terminator yeah. movie in the cinema since I went to see Terminator Two with you because I just know that just yeah, because we're watching four K. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> But yeah, but that, I, I, that ties that ties into what I think about it is that's the only situation I want to watch a movie in the cinema is if I'm getting an experience I can't get at home, mm -hmm. or the experience is going to be at least a bit better than what I, or not not necessarily what I couldn't get at home, but sometimes if it's like I just want to see it before it comes to home viewing because I've got a 65 inch TV and it's 4K with great HDR and I've got a sound bar so like it sounds amazing in my house yeah. and looks amazing in my house so like. I went to see the Batman because that was more like fear of missing out. Like I knew it was going to get spoiled for us. And, yeah. That's you know what it, I mean? Yeah. Most of the time, most of the time now I'm like not really bothered. But, and also like I said, the point he was making as well is like, there is obviously still great movies, but like if the movie is mostly people talking, then yeah. why would I go to the same? <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. I and mean, I know people will disagree with us because I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but like for me, that movie feels just the same sight in me dark room watching it well, <laughs> is it does it, in the cinema but there's less chance you're going to get annoyed by idiots in the cinema or yeah you, you, you can pause the movie to go take a piss do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. with the batman christ i mean i missed a good like two three minutes of the movie just going to the toilet because i was good long. about that because it's yeah. like it, that was the first time i've been back to the cinema in about six months or something or maybe even a year and i remember being like i'm good i kind of pause this <laughs> yeah to well, that's it like the one thing covid did for me personally and I, obviously it's harrowing and horrible and people lost lives was made me like watch more movies because it was like oh yeah. that was going to be in cinema so i'm going to watch it and it just made me appreciate watching movies at home a lot more because when you go yeah. to the cinema th th every time i've been to the cinema bar the batman there's been a problem like i went mm -hmm. to see the uncharted movie and there was girls, young girls there, just there to see Tom Holland. And they were just taking the piss the whole time through the movie, yeah. laughing. And it just, it winds us up. Like, when I'm watching mm -hmm. a film at home, I need absolute silence. Like, if someone's talking to us, I'm like, why are you talking? The film's on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when, it's the same in cinemas. When, <laughs> when my girlfriend talks to us, I pause it. Yeah. Uh, like, she's like, start talking, I go like, all right. Yeah, well, like, when the kids come in the like, room, <laughs> like, I, I, I put it on pause. Uh, or yeah. Casey be like, why have you put subtitles on? Because you are talking and I'm trying to watch a movie. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think without, like, those big, big blockbuster movies, I think cinema would be dead. So, yeah, as much as I don't yeah. like Jared Leto, uh, I, I agree, yeah. He's apparently not a very nice dude in real life, so. Yeah. Um, anyway. So, going for, <laughs> moving on from that. Yes. <laughs> from, from, from obviously, we're talking about, you know, the positives of streaming. There's kind of potentially negative news about Stream and Netflix. Obviously, um, they're testing in other countries because apparently the, they'll trial features and price plans in other countries to see how it goes down before they bring it to the wider West, Western audience. And what they're doing is they're adding a fee, which I think is 2 99 on top of whatever your subscription fee is for people who are sharing the password outside of the home. Right. Okay. So, like, you know, like, for example, like for me, Personally, I'm the one who pays for Netflix. Um, yeah, same. But my, but my mother uses my, my Netflix at her house, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it would mean, so they're obviously testing it currently, um, but that would mean if they would implement that, I'm already paying for the like the four screen package or whatever. Yeah. I'd have to pay another 2 99 on top. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, don't get us wrong. Like, I pay for mine and nobody uses it because, you know, I'm not mm. a hobo. I can afford <laughs> yeah. to, to, to pay for Netflix. Obviously, I'm yeah. joking. But, like, I know there is people who, who do, like, mm -hmm. let other people leech. in. Their <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> and, the joke, isn't fine. it, of Netflix yeah. leeches? Yeah. But, and that's fine with me. I'm pretty sure, like, um, Casey's been away and she give it to our friends while they were away to, to watch yeah. um, stuff. And I'm fine with it. And but I do think the two ninety nine thing is a joke. Like, mm -hmm. what's well, what's what's annoying is that they've said in their justification for it is that um, they're raising the price so that they can make more shows. And it's like, but the models already existed this long, and you've made all of these shows, albeit a fucking ton of them are absolutely dog shit. Yeah, I was going to say make more <laughs> shows you, you can cancel. But you've yeah, exactly, but you've made all these shows already, so with the money that you were getting, so the fee you already get is enough to support making that many shows. 
Yeah. If it means I have to make a few less shows and we keep the price, I don't give a shit because most yeah. of the stuff they post, I, but most of the stuff I watch on Netflix is something Netflix hasn't made. <laughs> do you know what well, I mean? it's the same. Like, man. it's mostly not Netflix original content that I actually yeah. watch. Do you know well, what I mean? If it so says like, Netflix or- originals on it, I'm like, nah, I'll pass. Like, the only yeah. one is that I watch is Cobra Kai, and it's not even mm-hmm. really a Netflix original because it was no, on yeah. YouTube, YouTube originals was, yeah. first, or you they read or whatever, it, yeah. and they, and they bought, bought the rights to it. So, but yeah, yeah. like, there's, there's a show called Sex Slash Life on netflix everyone's right. raging about and it's basically just a woman wants to cheat on her husband and then she's really sad about it and like all the housewives are like oh what i want to watch that like that is that the calabara content we're getting for what 12.99 a month like <laughs> yeah it's just ridiculous and and charging people <laughs> i've never even heard of it but i'm yeah. sold I oh yeah definitely you, you definitely like... want to know it's like yeah but i love me i husband. think it's just it sounds like just women looking for tips on how to like, get out well, I'm like, well, that, right. well that's it well so like, when, when i say a uh, lot of you watching it, i'll be like fucking hell i need yeah. to step up me game like well, that's it <laughs> basically like the premise is she, she's got a nice husband but he's boring and our oh, ex right, is right. like uh, he drives a motorbike and he's rich and he's got a big wang and she's like so how do i leave me kids oh, and stay home okay so screw it's this the... rich it's 50 shades of gray <laughs> it's 50 shades of gray but she's a size the... queen do you know what i mean yeah like, that's that's, the, that's, that's, that's the... what it is <laughs> it's the ultimate <laughs> fantasy of the top 10 percent it, it's this whole myth of like there's the perfect man but like the perfect man in terms of like He's handsome. He's he's uh, tall. He's fit, and he's rich, and all that. Like that guy doesn't want to settle down because he's got so many options. Well, yeah. So it's the it's like the female fantasy of like I tamed the wild man. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> you didn't. It, it wouldn't. It, didn't. <laughs> it wouldn't happen. Yeah, I mean they'd you know say I mean? that, and then they'd cut to the next scene, and he's hanging out the back of our sister. You just don't tame the wild man. That's <laughs> why no wild like... men. That's why the old in in the in the nineties going to yeah. try to settle down. If the guys, if the guy, if, the, if the guy's forty and handsome and driving a motorbike, he's not settling down. He's not like. <laughs> if you still got a motorbike, he's still he's I still can riding, like. I change him though. No, you can't. <laughs> What's not. different from you and all the other women? <laughs> Nothing. But yeah, that's mm. that's the type of caliber content to put on Netflix, and I do not want to pay an extra two ninety nine. I hope that. I hope get that's the pay off too. She like. I hope that she like leaves her husband and then he just like smashes and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rides off into the sunset. Just to have this like a big 12 minute sex scene and he's like, little bitch, thanks for that. <laughs> and like she's destroyed her whole life. He's just <laughs> revving his motorbike. And like, he's just going to get on his motorbike. Do you want us to drop you off? You can ride, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> just like just before. Ends. <laughs> and it just ends. <laughs> that's just the comes off thin. Yeah, thin, yeah. <laughs> Oh Christ! But oh, yeah, that's it's, uh, yeah, absolutely ridiculous. Um, and uh, no, I mean, I I want to now out of spite give somebody my password so they can watch it and then complain about the two ninety nine. Even yeah. though I, I just think that's ludicrous. Just I think we've just hit we've hit that tipping point where Netflix was such a fucking steal back in the day. You know, like it was what four ninety nine I think when it launched in the mm-hmm. UK, and I've had it since then. So it was just like yeah. it was such a steal then because there was nothing like it. And then it was like such a low price as well, like low barrier for entry. And now it's just like everything's exclusive to certain platforms. So you have to have all the platforms. Yeah, well, that's and it's it. like, yeah. It's basically like Sky. Sky hasn't died, but it's like Sky's just become something new. You know what I mean? So, yeah. like, if you were to get all the packages, which I know I normally have most of them, um, it's like I'm basically paying what I would pay for Sky for the full package on Sky. I just, I just don't pay one company. I pay six well, that's it, yeah. that's it, <laughs> and it's just like it's hitting that point where like i've seen some of the memes like people are bringing back memes about the pirate bay you know from back in the day well that's it yeah <laughs> because it's like that's why that was what the crescendo point for torrents wasn't it it was just like oh there's too much content and it's you know very expensive to watch it all because you have to buy individual dvds or whatever and i have to go to the cinema and then now it's like we're hitting another crescendo point where it's it's once again getting too much the Definitely. price of everything's going up as well in, especially like in the UK, you know what I mean? Like you've got obviously the prices of petrol and whatnot going up. Like people are going to start thinking, well, do I need to be paying, you know, especially if they're going to add two ninety nine, or do I really want to be paying nearly 20 quid a month for Netflix? I, I'll probably just not. Well, like, yeah, <laughs> probably exactly. do without, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, man, it's absolutely mental. Um, I mean, everything's forever going to go up though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So eventually yeah. we're going to pay 25 quid for Netflix and 25 quid for Disney. And I just... Like you say, well, they're all spread across. They should all like just make one giant streaming service for thirty quid a month and have everything on there because it's yeah. just going to get to the point that we can't even eat. I mean, that's why I think like obviously I don't have Sky, but um, 
my girlfriend's parents have it and stuff and that like sky has has been quite good i think um in they've had they've had to change to survive essentially you know what i mean like they had to adapt to survive yeah. so now you can like get sky but it includes netflix and everything you know what i mean yeah, so like you it, access yeah. it all from one place because i mean like you can get such a cheap android box these days that has all of the things you could need for like 30 quid yeah well that's and it, yeah. even if you want to break the law which yeah. we don't recommend you naughty people <laughs> you can absolutely do that you know yeah. what I mean? well that's it yeah it's it's ludicrous and netflix should be ashamed they all should man it should all be free they all should <laughs> what what actually i really hate as well is, is someone who pays for pretty much everything i mean when i say i pay for everything my, my partner pays for some i pay for some yeah um is amazon for example won't let you have sky's app Sky's streaming apps called Now TV, for example, yeah. they won't let you have their streaming app on their their stick, and vice versa. So like, yeah, it's like you, you kind of. So I ended up getting um, like a third party one, which is from Nvidia, kind of the Nvidia Shield, so that I could have all the apps on one box. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's how egregious it's getting. It's getting so fucking ridiculous and over the top. It's like absurd that I need to, like you got to buy this. I've got to find a certain box I can put every single service on. It's just mental. for the ple- for the pleasure of fucking paying for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I've bought this. In fact, that one. In fact, that these. one has that one has everything but Sky on. I think is is my box, and so I have to use Sky on the Xbox. <laughs> yeah. I mean? it's well, that's it. Like, yeah, I mean that's what my Christ. Xbox Series S is used for 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 now yeah. TV or, or Sky mm-hmm. Go or whatever it's called. Yeah, to watch like the rookie on it. Yeah, it's it's, it's just stupid. Nuts. Mental. So next bit of news is um, VGC has reported that um, Konami has updated its uh, trademarks in Japan um, for a handful of its properties, but most prominently they've um, renewed the title for Silent Hill. So their trademark of the name Silent yeah. Hill and all of the things affiliated with it, like the website and whatnot, which has prompted further speculation that we're going to get, you know, another Silent Hill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. I nope. think they're just renewing that so that they own the rights yeah. to that property. Well, but I don't it. think we're getting a new sound till. Well, no, because we really want it. It's like if I go on to Twitter every couple of days, Bloodborne and Silent Hill are trending because we we'll really yeah. everyone likes Bloodborne. Everybody loves Silent Hill, so Konami will not give us what we want. They're like Silent mm-hmm. Hill's coming, but it's a pachinko machine or it's a mm-hmm. skateboard. Just mm-hmm. give us a remake of Silent Hill or a new Silent Hill. That's what your fans Do want. You think- and it's 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 not going to happen. They're just keeping a hold of the license. They're saying you think, they aren't going to make it. Nobody else is. That's what they're doing. It's a it's a either card in the back pocket for if they're desperate, or do you think it's that they're worried because the, there's that whole obviously Resident Evil's managed to pull it off nicely, but it's it's the worry that if you were to remake it, you'd do a bad job. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like it could be really massively damaging because I think we've seen that. Like recently with Battlefield, one game can ruin a franchise. You know what I mean? Oh well, I mean like, they've already ruined so like, that franchise. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, with but I mean Silent like Hill it could games. re-release and then it'd be like, if it was absolutely dog shit, then there would be no hype ever again. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Oh, well, or it's I like, like now they're living in perpetual hype. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I, I do get that. But if you remake Resident Evil, eh, not Resident Evil, sorry, Silent Hill from the ground up, kind of like Resident Evil did, Resident Evil Two. Like, I can't see how it's going to be a bad game. Stick to the original story. Yeah. Have them, the original monsters, the original town, the original setting, what have you. And it's just not fixed camera angles and it looks really pretty. How are they going to fuck that up? If they yeah. go the Resident Evil 3 route and cut a lot of good shit out, yeah, then yes. An action game, yeah. then yes. Yeah. yeah. Stick to its survival horror. You've got hardly any uh, bullets, and you've got to pick and choose, and you've got puzzles to solve, and it's scary. And when you hear that radio static go off, you're like, "Oh my god, shit! It's monsters!" I don't know how they're going to screw that up if they just stick to the original formula. They just make it a pretty yeah. game. They put it third person, or even put it so you get the option of third person or fixed camera angles. Because I mean, games are doing that now. So yeah. I don't know how. They could get back into our good graces by remaking the first three or re releasing the first three pretty R and HD or what what have you. Um and then make a you'd new one. I think that at least do that. You'd think that at least just do an HD remaster. Yeah. I mean the, where they keep the game done fucking ninety percent the same. Yeah, but it was so bad. It was re- like really, really bad. <laughs> yeah. Um it was just an upscale, but it looked terrible. 
So if yeah. they went in and did it properly, I think, you know, it would be good. There's there's a mm. massive market out there that's been on tap for survival horror. Like I'm at the point now where I'm downloading like any kind of survival horror just to get me fixed because it's my favorite yeah. type of game. Um, yeah. There's, I can't remember the name of the game now. It's really, really good. Um, and it's kind of Silent Hill-esque. Um, and I've, I've totally spaced on the name. Tormented mm. Souls. I oh, think right, that's okay, what it's yeah. called. It's on it PlayStation is, yeah. 5, yeah? And I bought it for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox because I really enjoyed it. It's fixed camera angles. It's horror. The It's like the 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 monsters are like um, created from like people and turn into stuff and warped. And it's really, really cool. Right. And yeah. it give me that Silent Hill feel. And I, I've been looking on like Steam and I'm buying like 79 pence survival horror games just yeah. to get that fixed. So there's I was going to say, you play, you play yeah. any of them. Because the thing, the thing is as well is that those people making those games know the marks on tap because they're like making like like voxel, pixel kind of-esque versions of Resident Evil and they're getting like loads of um, buys for like not next to nothing. You yeah. know what I mean? So well, it's I quite think... easy for like one person. As, I'm, I'm buying quite easy, I'm saying, you know. In the greatest scheme of things, it's quite easy for one person to essentially remake Resident Evil in really low basic graphics with like uh, that kind of niche art style mm -hmm. and charge a couple of quid for it and still make like a million. <laughs> well, that's it, yeah, exactly, <laughs> like, which is insane. Yeah. And, and that just shows you like the appetite is there, it's mm -hmm. just the content isn't being created. I just, I, mean? I just think it's the same thing. It's like Sony, they're so out of touch with that fan base they think mm -hmm. they know best whereas the fans are like saying no no this is what we want so everyone wants a new silent hill game resident evil 2 being as good as it was has made people want a new silent hill game even more and yeah. that, that that they're just not listening they're like oh silent hill news is coming and then it's like oh he has a skateboard or he has a character that's going to be in dead by daylight when in reality we just want new silent hill but every time they renew something or news comes out about it, i'm just like they're just keeping hold of it they're just they're that yeah. petty they don't want somebody else to buy that franchise and make a game they just want to keep but hold of the property it would be super embarrassing to them though if someone did buy it and then make a better game mm -hmm. <laughs> i do just think that that's yeah. why i don't think there's a game coming i just think it's them renewing their licenses because that's what companies do they just it's not big news do you know what i mean yeah. um that licenses are renewed because that's just what it's it's big news if the license renewed after being untouched for 20 years or untouched for 10 years or something but if it's if it's never not been renewed that's not news yeah do you know what i mean that's just them holding on to their ip Definitely. Because because they could still potentially sell that IP as well if they ever choose to down the line, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that's it, yeah. So the next bit of news is like kind of two that tie in together, which leads to a greater question that I'm just interested in discussing. But um, Dr. Disrespect, you know, the, um, the famous Twitch streamer, who uh, the famous former Twitch streamer who yes. was banned from Twitch and now streams on YouTube. Um, no one ever found out the reason why he was banned from Twitch. Um, and that was big news. And then he's recently just come out and said, I've resolved my legal dispute with Twitch because he said that he was going to sue them yeah. when he'd found out the reason why he was banned, but he still didn't tell people why he was banned. Um, so he said, I've resolved my legal dispute with Twitch. No, neither party admits to any wrongdoing. Moving on. So it's yeah. kind of like it's behind him now. So I presume that means they've settled out of court with some sort of um, kind of payment scheme. But then... Dot of Disrespect's kind of always been in kind of the good graces, not always, but like mostly in the good graces with the community. And has recently opened his own game studio called Midnight Society. Yeah. Um, with the idea of making a battle royale, because that's mainly what he plays is battle royale games. And he always says there's all, all problems. And he is a former map developer for Call of Duty. Like he, he developed maps for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, I believe. So he was always like, I could make a better map. I could make a better battle royale. So the idea is that they're making this battle royale. But then hasn't announced the name of the battle royale um or a date or anything but then they've just announced um nfts for the, oh. for the battle royale <laughs> and obviously that's like um like lost them a lot of favor i think because people are like what and yeah. like it's like a kind of pre-order kind of thing so i think it's something like i don't know i think the news was a couple of days ago but it was like had a time limit of like seven days or something to buy in because it showed you some basic characters which did look kind of cool that kind of were like full black suit with like a black visor on and yeah. it had that kind of like a digital image on the face and there was different examples of these digital images so it's kind of like you were paying for skins or uh -huh. like emoji masks for these kind of characters as a pre-order but it ties into news that um forbes.com have just um announced a report saying that interest in nfts and the metaverse is falling rapidly <laughs> fast and it, apparently in the last 50 weeks uh, the last two weeks sorry it's dropped 50 percent in terms of um monetary gain the selling of nfts is all down 
um and, and just interest in general of that and the metaverse just like it's just in the tank people just yeah. don't give a shit well, and i just really wanted to tie that into what what do you think about nfts and the metaverse really ridiculous <laughs> absolutely ridiculous like you got you saw when it first was like all over the place like celebrities voice actors like oh and i'm getting on if you're not you know doing this you're, you're losing out and then two weeks later they were like ah actually no nah, take back what mm. i said i'm not going to do that yeah. do you know what i mean like troy baker he was one of them he was like i'm doing yeah. this you, you've got to he put some tweet on it was like product <laughs> douchey it was like basically you know if yeah you're, if get you're on board or get out sort of thing yeah kind of yeah and then two weeks later i was like actually no nah, you were right yeah you know what i mean he got they got such backlash for yeah. that it well, was, that's it, it was that's hilarious it. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. And you mentioned that Battle Royale, and I was like, oh, sweet. Because, you, like you say, he knows Battle Royales. So yeah. my, I was like, my hype was up here. And if you're yeah. listening to the podcast, my hand's pretty fucking high. Okay? <laughs> if you're not watching the video, <laughs> which is on YouTube, go and watch yeah. the video. The video. Uh, Just search so Jordy Media, what? Yeah, yeah, Jordy yeah. Media, yes. It's this high, really high. But then as soon as you said <laughs> NFTs, it's all the not way down. High. And you can't even see it. It's not even in the camera anymore. That's how yeah. low down it is. So yeah, just NFTs, man. I'm sick of hearing about them. Yeah. It's like everyone was talking about Wordle, right? And mm -hmm. NFTs. And I was like, I don't know what those are. I actually enjoy <laughs> Wordle now. I looked up yeah. NFTs. I still don't like NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I, did you see that video? I think it was uh, a clip from, I think it was Jimmy Fire. It was Jimmy Fallon and he's interviewing Paris Hilton. And they were talking about their NFTs that they'd both individually bought. And it was in you know, all those like bored ape nfts yeah, where it's like a yeah. picture of a bored gorilla or whatever yeah or a, a bored monkey or whatever um and it's just like it's the same board thing and then there's like all these variations of it like wearing glasses and dressed yeah. in outfits and whatnot and it was just like um them discussing them so because you don't obviously tangibly own anything they had printouts of their apes right. on little bits of cardboard and they were like this is mine and this is yours and it's just like they were talking about it and it was just like is that talking about gifts? Like yeah. you're talking about owning a gift, basically. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, but it's so, secured on the blockchain. So fuck, it's still just a gift. Out yeah. and like, I can still right click on that image and save it to my desktop. Oh, that's it. But, <laughs> you know? I mean, even one of my subscribers went, "Your logo, like the little shape head animation thing, is perfect for NFTs." I was like, "No thanks." Like straight away, I was just like, "No." <laughs> who'd who'd buy it though? Genuinely. I know exactly. Nobody would. It's not a good idea. <laughs> NFTs from anyone. It's yeah. not a good idea. This no, lowly absolutely. peasant YouTuber is certainly not going <laughs> to shoot himself in the foot before he's even got anywhere. Like, no. Yeah. Ridiculous. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, just... if I can see it's a bad idea. I don't know how other people didn't say it was a bad idea. It's yeah. just stupid. So also, like, what do you think about, obviously, the interest is also the exact same amount of disinterest is shown for the metaverse, which is obviously, you know, um, Facebook's recently changed its name to Meta. They were, like, talking about them having a metaverse, but then never actually showed anything tangible um what are your thoughts on you know that being the future i think i think it's so far off i thought it was closer than it was i really don't think it is anymore because don't the technology know what it is. isn't there oh uh, so the idea of the metaverse is just like you know like ready player one it's kind of like being plugged into uh, the matrix okay. like kind of living in a virtual world and that becoming the norm and just no. Just the technology's not VR's just not good well, enough, that's is it? it? Like I've VR, VR headsets on for ten minutes and I need to lie down. I'm like, oh I feel a bit sick. You yeah. know what I mean? So living in the metaverse and and just doing that and just no, it's just nah. It's, let's I just... don't even um I don't need, I, for me, like I say, I, I think I've said it before. I don't want to stand up and dance around and stuff. I don't want to move around. I know that sounds lazy as fuck, and it's because I am. But like at the end of the workday, for example. Exactly. Like, I don't want to put a headset on and then stand up for eight hours. Like I'd rather just sit and play with the controller so all he's saying is strap the screen to your eyes so i'm, yeah, like, well, I'm already it. looking at the fucking screen <laughs> i mean vr i enjoy like the resident evil game in vr i think it's really good yeah. and it, it brings a fear to it but again like you said yeah. i don't want to walk around a virtual world after i've have to walk around in the real one do you know what i mean like i want to sit down switch my brain off and play a video game i didn't I, yeah I, I mean i hate people in the real world could you imagine the the people you'd meet online I watched there's, there's, there's an app obviously on Steam called VR Chat. So I don't know if you pay for it or whatever, or you just, or it's free. I can't remember. But I watched a documentary about it on um, YouTube the other day. It was fucking brilliant. I can't remember who it was by though. But um, it was like, you basically, you, you, it's just a chat room, virtual, but obviously you put your VR on, but you're obviously talking to real people, but they have their own avatars. 
Um, right. And the literally the game will let you import any avatar you want, sort of thing. So people pay money to have them custom made and stuff. Right. Okay. Um, but they don't pay like a co- like like the actual owners of VR chat. They just pay like a, a random designer. Yeah, Anything yeah. can be uploaded. So anyone you encounter in that world can be absolutely any character that you could imagine mm-hmm. as well as unique characters and stuff like that but it was this whole thing of like them just talking about like what, what what's vr chat like and it was just like creepy as fuck and yeah, exactly, weird and exactly i mean there's a, there's a thing where like apparently if you make a world um you have to put a mirror in because people are more interested in the mirror than anything else so like someone was like i went to this nightclub right so in game he goes in he's like so there's this massive virtual nightclub and i cannot see anyone I'm like, hey, there's nobody on the dance floor. There's nobody at the bar, like the, this whole nightclub. And then he's just like, and then I found there was 40 people in the server or whatever. He's like, I found 40 people standing in front of the mirror because people just like to stand in front of the mirror, looking at their avatar and moving around. And it's probably because like, I presume you would have your avatar be whatever your fantasy is. Do you know right, what I mean? okay, yeah. So if you want to look like, I don't know, Batman. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You'd look like Batman. So you're like, just looking at yourself in the mirror doing Batman shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it just when it when it was described it was just weird as fuck I'm, <laughs> i was like is this the metaverse yeah, well like that's a bunch exactly. of perverts looking at themselves in the it, mirror, and it will but, be oh, right. like what you'll get is you'll get like say a twitch streamer like amon ranth or whatever our name is <laughs> yeah and then you'll just get our simps like watching our avatar in the bath instead of her <laughs> but this time they can actually rub our back and shit like that's yeah. what it, it's just it's going to be something that's going to be immediately turned into porn because everything is now <laughs> turned into porn yeah. Like Marvel, their movies are the, there's a million porn parodies because everybody's like, yeah, but can I can I have sex with it? Can I fuck it? That's what the metaverse will become. It will yeah. become a place where you can have virtual sex with a man who's dressed as a woman and he's called Dave. And you're like, well, don't talk, Dave. I want to do the woman. And then Dave like talks like, well, you've ruined the moment now. He's like, sorry, mate. Like it's it's, it's just going to become that. It, yeah. Everything does like. Everyone's like, oh, we're going to ten years away from androids, and there's always those people like, yeah, but can I have sex with the androids? Like, no. <laughs> You can't stop asking to have sex with everything. That's what the metaverse is going to become. Yeah. Can I, fuck I mean, it? I suppose the VR chat is always going to have a niche amount of people. So I suppose you could, you know, because the idea is that if a metaverse was to happen, everyone would be in the metaverse or 99% of people or whatever would be in the metaverse. Whereas yeah. obviously something like VR chat is just going to be kind of lonely, weird. Host, well, know? that's it. Yeah. But I mean, like when I watched that documentary, I was like, "Well, if this is an avatar, this looks terrible." Like, I don't. Yeah. One, I mean, the graphics look fucking terrible. Obviously, that will improve with time. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I was just like, but he was just like, I, he did an experiment because it was quite a long documentary. It was like fifty minutes or something, and it was like, he was like, "Oh, some people like to sleep in VR." So he's just like, so he was trying to do it, but he's just like, obviously you're sleeping, there's two screens blaring your eyes, so even if your eyes are shut, they're still being bled. And then he's just like, and then people who, like, there's literally servers apparently made for sleeping, but then other people will come in and do everything they can to try and wake exactly. you up as well. <laughs> just exactly. like, it's so weird though. Just, just t- turn off the game and go to sleep. Like a normal person, <laughs> don't sleep in your game while sleeping. Ridiculous, yeah. man. Yeah, you know, why don't you have a girlfriend? Oh, because I'm sleeping in VR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, I've right. got a girlfriend, but she lives in uh, the Metaverse land, and our real name's Dave. Like, that's just like your girlfriend, then. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You'll never know who someone is as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, just it's be... like catfishing, like, VR edition. Yeah. Like, yeah, my, <laughs> my, name's, my name's Cindy. <laughs> it's, like, really sexy one, but behind it's like a 300-pound man <laughs> with a voice yeah. modulator. I'm like, oh, I can't wait until you take us home. Have you got any money you can send us? Like, oh, well, Cindy, don't worry. <laughs> Like it's 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 just gonna be extreme catfish and VR edition. It's that, yeah. that's it. I'm sure I'll amalgamate like three different shows there, but still anyway. <laughs> it, it, it it's gonna it's become can, can I fuck it? Oh, can can we fuck? Like, yeah, I'm a girl, definitely I'm really a girl though. And it's it's not it's a dude rinsing simps out of cash. That's what it'll become. <laughs> Absolutely. It just sounds like I say it's just not it's not there yet. And it, like no. say VR chat so far, if that's any hint of the metaverse just seems weird, perverted, and a bit creepy. <laughs> yep. So our last bit of gaming news is um, between my last episode and now PlayStation have done two state of plays. They have, yeah. Um, so the, th- the first one was um, like focused on Japanese games mainly. Uh, I don't know if you watched that. Did you say any of that? Nope. So it was very um, weird and underwhelming. But then, obviously, that's not my genre of games. A lot, a lot of those games. So obviously, it wasn't going to massively appeal to me. So I'm sure it was good for some people, but to me, it was just like mostly weird. They yeah. announced a game called Capcom announced Exo Primal. I think you might have seen that. 
Yeah. Um, because people were like hyped thinking it was going to be, you know, something big like Resident Evil or something. And it was like this kind of weird as fuck kind of anthem looking game. It was kind of like anthem kind of suits, but the graphics were shit. And then there were fighting waves of dinosaurs. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was well. just looked weird. It looked then we saw bleh, some yeah. of like the not the normal stuff. Like we saw Forspoken, which is like that kind of superhero um PS5 exclusive. Um that's been delayed. Yeah. That game looks kind of one of the things for me is that game visually looks great, but I don't know if I'm sold on like it's one of those games where it's like it looks really good, but I'm not sure I want to play it. Well, that's exactly the same with me with the Horizon Zero games. Like they yeah. look really good, but I've got the first Horizon Zero Dawn, I think it's called. And yeah, I played yeah. it and I'm just like, I'm, it, it, it felt kind of soulless. It was pretty, yeah. but it was soulless. So the second one, like I just watched videos. I was like, wow, that looks really good, but I don't want to pay 60 quid to, yeah. to walk around the map for an hour and then just go back to PUBG. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I understand what you mean with that. Definitely. Yeah. There was an announcement for a first person shooter, which is a genre I love. Um, and it was a Gundam themed first person shooter called Gundam Evolution. I'm not a fan of the Gundam universe, not in the sense of I hate it. I'm just not interested in it. But um, it looked so bad. It looked like a really old Halo with kind of cod like shooting. So like, I just, it just looked very generic, very underwhelming. Yeah, didn't didn't look like a modern game. Like like if you told us it was a 360 game, I would have believed it. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it just didn't look like. Yeah. Um. I mean, I mean, so the, the only other bit that was interesting from that that first day of play was um, obviously Returnal, um, which is like a roguelike shooter, is doing its first DLC, which is adding a survival mode and co-op. And I think obviously in addition of co-ops, always great. That's another game though. Where I think it looks really cool, but I'm not sure I want to play. It. Yeah, I mean, is that where you die and you start from the very start of the game? Yeah, yeah. I don't have time. Like Sifu. Se- you get like uh, so many lives and then you've got to start again like that's fine but if it's like literally you've got one life and you go right back to the start like, i don't have yeah. time for that that's nonsense for me I i'm mean, not I... sure how far you go back to yeah. be honest because I, d- I don't know if it's like i think it's like kind of roguelike so it might be like the worlds are a bit different each time ah, you okay. go to different all right so you're stuff. saying different right well that's fair enough yeah, but, yeah i mean I, it looks okay but i just i i don't have time for any games right now really if i'm being honest i'm so <laughs> buried in editing like i yeah. switch my computer on i go to play it and then i fell asleep because I'm just that <laughs> tired. Yeah. So, like, obviously, um, Lily, she's currently got COVID. And obviously, that's horrible. But I'm at the point mm. now, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to spend time, you know, looking after her. I- I'm going to have to yeah. take a week off work. So I'll yeah. be able to game. But I'll probably just, again, play PUBG. Because that's <laughs> I, I just switch it on and play a few rounds. And then, yeah. you know what I mean? I there don't have time there for, isn't, new, for new there, games. There isn't, um, there isn't a lot right now, though, is it? Let's be honest. Yeah, well, that's it, yeah. Um, apparently, there's the Overwatch 2 um, PvP beta um, coming in April as well. Oh, yeah. I'm just right, not. Yeah. I will play it, but I'm not hyped for no. Overwatch 2 just because it'll just be more Overwatch. It will. It will be getting ripped tired left and right. I mean, and we, I know. Yeah. We, we put so many hours, like over 60 hours in the original Overwatch, oh, God, yeah, and we yeah. did love it. But then it, the bullshit starts to creep in, doesn't it? And you're just mm. like, well, I'm not having a good time anymore. So, mm-hmm. Overwatch 2, it'll probably be the same for me. Like, I'll be like, oh, that, that's cool. There's new characters, new maps. I'll play it. And then it'll get to the point where I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to play anymore. So, yeah. I mean, I might just wait in, like a couple of weeks or a month till there's like a, pr- a little bit of a price drop and then get it that way. It's weird because I feel, I just feel like they missed the window for Overwatch 2. I feel like because their model was just always adding more characters. I just feel like, isn't this just more characters? Yeah. <laughs> now, whereas like, I feel like if it was like, if it was like three years ago or two years ago and they did Overwatch chat, I probably would have been more interested than I am now. Yeah. Uh, yeah makes but sense. like, I feel like now I'm at, I'm at that point, but it, it probably has coincided with us being a bit burnt out on like COD and Battlefield and stuff like that as well. Yeah. It's probably just come at the worst possible time. So but the second PlayStation State Play was just dedicated entirely to Hogwarts Legacy. Did you watch that? I, I I watched it after the fact. I didn't watch it live, yeah. but I watched like the fourteen minutes of of gameplay. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? Some of it is is great. Like I like the idea of this like a mystery, and you've got to solve the mystery and stuff like that. But then there's other parts they were like, and you'll be at school, and you'll be in class, and you've got homework, <laughs> and I'm just like, but I did that. It like, was weird. It was years like... ago. Like it's, it was a bit like uh, Bully, wasn't it? It, it had yeah. like a vibe uh-huh. of kind of... But with Bully, it was like two minutes of class and then the rest was doing missions. I've just yeah. got this feeling you're going to spend like a good three hours before <laughs> you go off to do it, like doing potions. Yeah. And so you've got to upgrade your character so they're better at fighting. Yeah. And I don't know why, but the wand fighting just to me looks ridiculous. Now, I'm a massive <laughs> Harry Potter fan. 
I love right. the, the the books. Like, I was in I was in line at Tesco at midnight to get the final one because I, I love Harry Potter. Like that, nobody knows that. That's like big yeah, news. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do I do love. I mean, maybe less so since you know J.K. Rowling's a massive dick. Shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the game it was like it was two games. I like the adventure side of it. I don't like mm. the idea of having to do homework and yeah potions I'm, classes. I'm and the shit. opposite. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, so like. Yeah my i think maybe three books had come out at this point and my um my step gran or step nana um she bought me like the the trilogy of books out that wow at the time and i read and i used to and this was at the height of when i used to love reading books and i read maybe half the first book i was bored of yeah. <laughs> well, um, i just enough. never never got into it and then i watched the first film it was all right and then i worked at a cinema when two of the films came out when i was like 19 or 20 and I did go and see them because all my friends went to see them who I was working with and stuff. Yeah. Um, and th- they were fine movies. But the antithesis is that I actually really like the Fantastic Beast movies. <laughs> like, I think right. they're really good fun. But it's probably because I just don't care about, like, the children's side of it. Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just, I'm just not interested in kids, essentially, in most, in, in films or otherwise. Oh, I'm, I'm exactly the like, same. Like, annoying- so I think maybe that's it. But I must say, I watched that trailer and I was really impressed. Like, yeah. I couldn't believe how good it looked visually and i was really impressed with the scope of like wow there's so much to fucking like when it made obviously perfect sense but when it showed you them and flying on the, um, the broomstick or whatever mm-hmm. on his fucking nimbus 3000 or whatever like when i fucking seen that i was like oh fuck yeah it, of course they can fly a boot and stuff and but then it blew my mind even more because it was like so now we're on a completely different plane do you know what i mean yeah it's kind of like you know it's kind of like if, if they added a fly mechanic the fucking elden ring you know what i mean where you're like oh, oh this yeah. is beautiful oh you can fly as well like it, it just i was just like fuck like, no i, I, I don't know it was if, so long as well yeah i don't know if this is actually true or if maybe i've just thought this up but i'm pretty sure that in elden ring you can fly a dragon i, I don't quote okay. us on that i think it's either because do you know when you watch so much youtube and it's just all like goes into in your brain I'm pretty yeah. sure I saw a video of somebody flying a dragon, but I'll have oh, to double nice. check. But yeah. if you can, I mean, yeah. But yeah, I, I get I get what you mean. I really do. But it's just mm. the school side of things I'm not interested in. I don't yeah. want to see Professor Flitwick pull a goblin out of a hat or whatever. I don't know. Whatever they do in the, in the... <laughs> goblin. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a magician. He's a well, wizard. It's well, different. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the fan. <laughs> I'm the fan, and you're like, well, actually, it's the, the, not the not magicians, the wizards. Um, yeah, just because I mean, you're basically like, just, I can't believe he didn't pull a rabbit over. I don't want to yeah, see that. Goblin man. Um, Show yeah. us a card trick, man. I know. Do do card <laughs> tricks. Just kill Voldemort with card tricks. Find the queens or whatever. I um, also think as well, though, it looked a bit like, you know, like the outfit and stuff. Obviously, it was like the school kind of kind of cape thing that they wear. I was like, obviously that looked lame. And then later on in the trailer, it showed customization. I was like, oh wow, this is kind of like, it was like bullying away when you go out of town into the t- out of the school into yeah. the town, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're just wearing normal clothes. And I'm like, this is cool as fuck. Yeah. So like for me, I was like, this is like Harry Potter and bully combined. Yeah. In a much bigger open world, so I was really impressed, and I did not expect the trailer to be that long and show that much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, I, like, after like two minutes, minutes, I was like, this isn't real yeah after yeah. like two minutes i was like fuck off it's not this big and then they just kept and like i wouldn't have believed it if if you just if you'd wrote wrote everything down that happened and just read it to us i would say fuck off that's all in that game but yeah. the fact that they backed it up with gameplay i was just like oh wow this is massive yeah man i mean it could be great it could, it could. be shit. It, it could i mean it, it could i mean have you obviously heard about the controversy around it like um trans people aren't going to support the game yeah. and stuff like that and i i do understand it i do and like I'm not going to tell anybody what they should shouldn't do. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it's their their right. I mean, like a lot of people, a lot of trans people love J.K. Rowling until she opened her fucking mouth. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it's it has broke my heart, and I totally one hundred percent understand that. Mm-hmm. And if they don't want to do it, that's fine. But at the, at the heart of it as well, there, there is a team of hardworking individuals who are making this game who are going to get punished for that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? They they can't I help think... the fact that she's a massive piece of shit. They're stuck between a rock and a hard well, place. That's it, I mean, yeah. obviously, I say the the moral side of it. Like, obviously, I'm completely pro trans. Uh, I think in the game you can actually um, be a trans character as well. Oh well, that, that's um, I'm sure they announced that. But like, I understand that that side of it. Um, for me personally, like I say, because I have no 
um, investment in the series. Like, I don't care about Harry mm. Potter. Like, never really cared about it beforehand. Like, it's not massively moving to me in, in that sense. I think J.K. Rowling's obviously a piece of shit. I've yeah. not really looked into much of what you said because, like, once again, I'm not really invested in that world. I don't uh, really care yeah. about her um, per se. But, like, she's literally a billionaire. Yeah, I know. Well, that's So, it. like... I know that there's the idea of that you're keeping money out of our pockets, but it's like she wouldn't even notice that money go in or not, yeah. or not well, either way. It, yeah. Like Harry Potter could literally die, and this is why she's free to say whatever the fuck she wants. Oh, yeah, it's, because she's made her money. Because fran- she's made so much money. The franchise, she could kill the franchise completely and just say, like, well, actually, I've, I've wrote Harry Potter and he's actually a racist the whole time. Like, she yeah. could say that now oh, yeah. and kill the franchise or whatever. And it wouldn't have any negative effect on her other than, like I say, her social media, certain people like well, feel a certain way. But when you live in this, when you're a billionaire, it's it's an unfathomable bubble that she lives in. Mm-hmm. Like, I agree. she's just untouchable, essentially. Yeah. So, like, it's not going to affect her either way. Yeah. So I just well, think it boils it. down to, like, is 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 it, is it, can you separate the art from the artist? It's, like, it's kind of like the Michael Jackson thing. Can you listen? Because weirdly, I can listen to Michael Jackson and really enjoy it. Like, I love Michael Jackson movie, movie yeah. music, even though I do think he was a wrong one. Oh, but yeah. Co- co- like, the, the the kind of opposite of that, or converse, that would be, like, um, The Lost Prophets. The lead singer of The Lost Prophets, oh, like, went yeah. to prison for being a pedo. I can't listen to The Lost Prophets now. Like, yeah. more realistically, I can't bring myself to listen. And I loved a lot of those songs, because I'm mm-hmm. a filthy emo, you know what I mean? So I love yeah. <laughs> that music from that time when I was, yeah. like, 13, 14. Um, and I like, but I won't, I won't choose to listen to that music. Whereas I will with Michael Jackson. Yeah, do you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So I, it's it's that it's, it's like I say. I think it's either way. I don't think that if you choose to um, play the game, it makes you a piece of shit. No, I also think in Twitter as well. A lot of people really don't understand in the Twitter sphere that it's an echo chamber of your own opinions. So you're mostly shown content that you like, and then it tries to show you similar content that you like. So it might appear that everyone is on your side sometimes when they're not, Mm -hmm. or it's a vocal minority as well. So like the gaming community, for example, a low massive on Twitter in terms of the actual wider gaming community, it's such a small amount are on Twitter talking about video games. So like to be like, Oh, everyone who buys that game hates trans people. I bet you there'll be literally million or, or more people who buy that game and have no idea there was any controversy. Oh, yeah, it. of course. I mean, because some of my mates, follow the news. Yeah, like that casual gamers, and they'll see a game like, oh, that looks all right, and they'll buy not knowing the controversy mm-hmm. around it, and and mm-hmm. th- that's fine. But, I mean, wait, the, the hill you die on k- kind of thing, it's like, well, where do you draw the line? Like, I, I, I 100% understand that I've got trans friends, and I understand why they're so upset and hurt by it, and I really fucking do, and it's disgusting. But, like, then are you buying jeans from, like, a place where they've used children and slave labour? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, where, like, yeah. Yeah, and like, where, where'd you get your iPhone from? Or there's always mm-hmm. there's always a harrowing story from everything in life, mm-hmm. and, and and there is. So it's, I, it's like the kind of eternal the conundrum. Yeah, well, that's it. That's yeah. it. And it it, it it does. I mean, it really upsets us that there's fans of of J.K. Rowling and she's just come out and and it's basically well, I'm not transphobic, but it's like that. I'm not racist, but and then they say the most racist thing ever. It's transphobic. Yeah. What you've said is fucking horrible, and you shouldn't have said it. And you need to keep your mouth shut. But she keeps doubling down and doubling down, and and she's a horrible piece of shit for her. But again, what are they going to do? Because she's a billionaire. If she never ever makes another property ever again, she's made her money. She's got mm-hmm. Harry Potter. It's like George Lucas and Star Wars. Like he sold it to Disney for billions. Now he could turn yeah. around and say, "Oh well, um, yeah, um, Luke Skywalker's a, a, a rapist." Well, what can you yeah. do about it now? Nothing. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. But then my my mind went, "Oh well, just buy the game secondhand. That way, J.K. Rowling doesn't get your money." But then neither does the company that made the game. And again, which how how do you, do you support that company without supporting J.K. Rowling? You can't. And what that company has worked for hours and months and weeks and years on that game are being penalised because of that piece of shit. And that's why I don't think it's fair. And I I genuinely believe that. The argument I've seen is people going, well, developers get paid anyway. And they normally get a bunch of them normally get laid off. It's very normal in game development that once a game's launched, a big portion gets let go. So it's kind of like, well, they've already been paid anyway, whether the game does well or not. But it's just like, yeah, but the, the question is, is like, can you choose to play a game that you want to play? That's and it. at the end of the day, you can do what you like. At the end of the day, like some people are going to like you, some people are going to hate you. You know, it's it's like it's like if someone was to accuse you of being racist, 
it's not your job to to prove that disprove them wrong if they're just a random person. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Well, that's it, yeah. Because I know in my heart I'm not racist. So if someone came up and said you're racist and they were just looking to get a reaction, they wouldn't get it from me. I'd just be like, no, I'm not, and then just move on yeah, <laughs> with me well, day. It, yeah. And it's the same with that. Like just because you play a Harry Potter game, that doesn't make you transphobic. Well, at all. no, not at all. It not, really not at all. If you've got friends who are transphobic who choose to not speak to you as a result of that, that is very hard, obviously. Mm-hmm. But once again, that's their decision at the end of the day. And if they're if they're your true friend, they would know the real reason why you were doing it. Or yeah, but I'm not oh, even yeah. a hardcore. I'm, I'm like I say, I've got no horse in this race. I'm not no. a Harry Potter fan. I just yeah. think that I was I was very pleasantly surprised by how good it looked. Yeah, yeah. I, it I'm cool still not game. sure I would play it. I, I'm still not sure I would play it regardless because it's just not really my yeah yeah oh yeah. House, no, but I was that. like, I thought it was like a very interesting topic, and I just think it was yeah. very. I mean, I was, very technically impressive demo though. Well, oh yeah, I, I agree. I mean, obviously, the only reason I bring it up is because I mean, I, d- I didn't want it to be like, well, we'll just talk about the cool shit and we'll not talk about the controversy because then you'll get yeah. people like, well, why didn't you mention that? And, and I just wanted to bring it up. I mean, I, I stand with trans people and I agree she's a piece of shit, but also the developers of the game and everybody involved work hard, and you can support them without supporting her. It, it, that's the way I yeah. look at it. But again, I'm not telling people what they should and shouldn't do. That's just my opinion, and yeah. Um, it's, ultimately it's, everyone has to make their own individual decision and that's it yeah. just like just like fucking everything in life you deal with the consequences of that and yep i agree it is what it is but ultimately games are just meant to be a bit of fun aren't they yeah that's it yeah so from one harrowing thing we should probably move on to the movie that we'll watch because each week we'll watch a movie that we decide to kind of go back and watch a classic kind of intentionally bad movie <laughs> yeah like a, uh, like um, a post-mortem review so the film that we chose was double dragon from yay <laughs> Yeah, so are we going to go movie review and then into the little game I've got planned, or do you want to do the game first? Or oh, I forgot you had a game plan because so, <laughs> I normally lead, which is why I'm like, well, that's it. Yeah, wait a minute, what? Like, so you know what I mean. I'm not used to you being like, well, I want to be the man. In the yeah, dance. I'm. I'm, so I'm like, I'll All right, lead. Well, crap me ass then. I will. I fucking will. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if you're happy to do the game now. Yeah, let's do the game. Um, right, okay. I already so, forgot what it was, but let's Right, go. okay. So basically, I've been on Letterboxd to find the worst reviews um, of a series of films. And now, obviously, we watched the Batman last week. So I've picked reviews from Batman films, and I'm yeah. going to read them to you, and I want you to guess which one it is from. Now, right, okay. you get points. The points mean nothing. You don't win anything, <laughs> really. It's just that's how the game is played, okay? In my mind, I was like, this will be fun. So <laughs> it'll either never come back or people will love it so much, we'll do it every week. I don't know. <laughs> but yes. Um, so basically, the, 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 the I don't even have a title. It's just letterboxed reviews that Paul <laughs> says and then Ben gives opinions the game. Yeah? That's the title. Bold. Bold. <laughs> yeah. So we'll start with an easy one. Okay. So again, Batman movies. Just think it's all they're all Batman movies. Yeah. You've just got to go, right? So this was watched by Dirk H on November the twenty second, two thousand and seventeen. The Avengers. What movie do you think that is in the Batman franchise? The Avengers. The Avengers. Yeah. Is it the Justice League? It is. Yeah, one point. <laughs> go you. Let's go. Let's, yeah, let's go. Uh, Ben's won a point. He's I was. Point. I was. My mind was going. Is that? Does that really count as a Batman movie? Yeah. But... Yeah. Well, it 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 does. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that I like that. Uh, it's good. Uh, so yeah, this one I'm gonna have to omit certain parts because okay. it tells you about the movie. But this this is this is this is a good one. Just ridiculous and absurd. A Batman? Did he get the rabies or something? What the heck is going on? I like comic book Batman. I like 60s Technicolor comedy Batman. I like German expressionist live action gothic boy cartoon Batman. I like 1990s art deco cartoon Batman. I like gay 90s glow in the dark cheese Batman. I like authoritarian Batman. I like Batman vs. the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I like all the Batmans. That's in caps. Uh And this is the most Batman Batman to date. This Batman is equal quality filmmaking, if not better than authoritarian Batman. But this version is not ashamed to be Batman. Batman, like authoritarian Batman was. She's a pretty lady. I like her dad. <laughs> Which right, Batman? So it's, author- is- so it's authoritarian. Yeah. I love how serious you're taking. Like, well, well, actually. 
<laughs> is this the Batman? Because if, yeah, if, 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 yeah, because yeah. it's uh, Zoe Kravitz's dad, Lenny Kravitz, yeah. that was saying that he likes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that. <laughs> I like I, <laughs> what was it he said? I like goth boy fucking yeah. Batman, was it? Yeah, I, <laughs> I like gay 90s glow in the dark cheese so basically likes all the batman but yeah. for some reason he reviewed the batman one star didn't say why he didn't like it he just liked <laughs> all the other batmans and this is the most batman this one made me laugh until i couldn't sing <laughs> my, 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 <laughs> my girlfriend left me after i took her to see this i wish i was good <laughs> So Christian oh. Hugo is single as of 10th of March, 2022. So that wasn't when he saw it, just to clarify. Yeah. That was when he posted his review. Half a oh, star. God. What, who, would, who would leave you during a Batman? Yeah, well, this is it. Oh, God. So, I mean, mine's obviously thinking cheesy Batman. Yeah. Because that's because why would you leave? The only other thing he's thinking is Batman Begins was a bit slow because <laughs> he's not Batman for fucking yeah. ages. So, uh, oh, I'm going to go with a cheesy Batman, though, but... I, Batman and Robin is objectively worse than forever, so I'm going to say Batman and Robin. Ah, uh, it's Justice League. It's Justice League. Oh, no League. way. Yeah, it's <laughs> Justice League. for Justice League. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Fucking Joss Whedon just causing problems uh, but he left won, and right. He won, he, he won our back with the Snyder Cut, though, didn't he? Oh, oh, probably. He's like, watch this version. Watch this and then suck me dick. What? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is my favourite review of any review ever. Half mm-hmm. a Star by Vazim. Shit's ass. That's the review. Shit's ass. It's got to be Batman and Robin then. It's got to be. I wish it was. I wish it was. The Batman? Shit's ass. That's it? That's the... What was he watching? I know, Vazim. What were you watching? (laughs) Brother, what's up? So yeah, that one. Shit's ass. Shit's ass. Right. (laughs) Right. Okay. So this is the next big ranty one. I like that though. That one's beautiful. Yeah, it's shit's so ass. Fucking it's poetic. It's so succinct, isn't it? Yeah, it's just <laughs> mwah, chef's kiss. Right. Still horrible movie. Most overhyped piece of cinema in existence. Everybody mm-hmm. who loved this, both now and back in the day, pretends to be a comic book connoisseur. I don't know why they're just going Ooh. straight to cast <laughs> and, <gonna> act. <laughs> and acts almighty. But the truth is, you all know shit about comics and you just kiss boots of that ugly, pretentious male who bastardized an amazing comic book character and made it into a shallow shadow of someone who's supposed to be very intriguing and gloomy. Gotham was bastardized as well. I hate this so much. More than that, Addison Rae film, he's all that. And that tells a fucking lot. I hate (laughs) film stands so much. Seven likes. Ooh. That one got seven likes. So. Seven likes. So. <laughs> the Dark Knight. Wow. I, yes. Yeah. Because nice. I feel like I feel like he was like everyone who likes the Dark Knight doesn't yeah. know anything about Batman. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I agree with them. They did bastardize Gotham, like, yeah, but uh, like, no, the Dark Knight's fucking brilliant. So he's a yes. fucking idiot. <laughs> yes, yeah. You you are, and I've cut his name out because I didn't want to put his name in. So, um, Ansh, give one star to this movie. It's 2022, and I continue to despise this piece of shit, bitch, pussy, head ass, no bitches or bastards, cock sucking, dick walking, pussy lacking, boobs, no touching film. That, that's someone who was upset that the movie wasn't like a porno variant. Yeah, I think Batman he was looking wasn't. for a porn parody and he was like, I came to the like, cinema for now. Yeah, you didn't shag Catwoman, I'm not interested. Yeah. Like, um, oh, God. It could be any of them. Really, it could be fucking be anything. Yeah. That is uh, quite a hard one. Batman Forever. No. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's the Dark Knight. It's the Dark Knight. Right. Oh, <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like how it's taking an emotional toll on you. <laughs> it's just I'm trying to get through them without laughing my head without off. Crying. Yeah. Three cosplaying. Comic hops- book connoisseur. <laughs> Three cosplaying homicidal psychotics, driven insane by a pulpy cocktail of sexual desire, emotional trauma, and socio-economic anxiety, wage open armed conflict in a major metropolitan area. This was bankrolled by a major studio and released to an eager public. Four stars. <laughs> you can't play about it, but give it four stars. Matt, well, well played, sir. So which, which Batman do you think that is? <laughs> I love the Batman film. Begins. No, no, I'll give you one more guess. Read it again. Okay. 
Go get another go. <laughs> yeah. I'll oh, phone yeah. a friend. You can phone a friend. Oh, yeah. you're already here. Uh, three cosplaying homicidal psychotics driven insane by a pulpy cocktail of sexual desire. Oh, Batman and Robin. Batman Returns. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Yeah, it's because I was thinking of three. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. okay so I've got, yeah. I've got two more and then we're going to yeah. move Accepted. on. Right. I hope you're counting me scores. I am. Like, you've got <laughs> at least yeah. three. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Shit's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Half a star by Lucy. To put it eloquently, this movie fucking sucks. <laughs> now, that could be a few of those movies. No, no, right. um, I, I don't want to say Batman and Robin again because I've said it every time yeah. and it's been wrong. So, Batman <laughs> and Robin. <laughs> Justice League. Justice, Justice League. League. Right, hold oh, on. Wow. Hold on. I'm great. Okay. Um no, that, that, not that one. Not that one. I've I've done that one. <laughs> I've done that one. Um Kill Me, please. I've wasted two hours watching this dumb shit ass movie and I want to bleach my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> this dumb shit ass shit ass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um Oh god. Say Batman and Robin. Yeah, uh, Batman and Robin. <laughs> yes! I might just say that for everything. Yes, this, I got it. This is the last I one. I did it, Mom, I did it. This is the last one. This movie, so gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Batman and Robin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> See? Yeah. You just say the same answer. It's eventually yeah, got to be right. Uh, you yeah. Know what I mean? Like nine times out of ten, you're wrong. But those... stopped clocks right twice a day. Yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, so um, that was um, Paul talks about letterbox reviews and Ben guesses <laughs> the, the game. So yeah, um, I just thought it would be fun to. <laughs> but if I need to lie down. I need to lie down. Somebody doesn't write underneath our podcast. This shit's ass. I don't want to do a podcast anymore. <laughs> At least this time they'll be writing it with a reason to not hurt with. <laughs> yeah, well, this, yeah, that's, that's true. So, yeah, that, that was the game that has no name. I think that should be its oh, name now, actually. That the, game, the game that has no name. <laughs> I like it. Oh, uh, so, God. finally, we're going to move on to the movie, movie yeah. review. So, yeah. um, like I, I think we'll peak, we'll... to be fair, like. But, yeah, we'll, we'll do a movie review anyway. We'll peak about, we peaked about six podcasts to go and yeah. on three. That's <laughs> true. That is true. So oh. the movie that we decided to review was uh, Double Dragon from 1994, which we thought would give a post-mortem review, which is, uh, how can I describe Double Dragon? Shit's ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next. <laughs> yeah. How could I? How, how could I? It's so gay. What's, what's so weird about it? I mean, there's, me there's many, many oh, things that are what... weird about this yeah. movie. But like, for me, it's like, the plot of Double Dragon is the girlfriend gets kidnapped, but like it's kind of neither of the brothers' girlfriends. Yeah. And then they spend the whole game fighting a bunch of enemies and bosses to get the girlfriend back. Then they fight at the end to see who gets the girl. Oh yeah, because you know women are prizes. Very. Because women are prizes, of yeah. course. I mean, but then they get then then the, but then the film they're like, hey, let's tell a completely different story. Yeah. So that even in the nineties they weren't learning a lesson about being yeah. faithful to the and, and weirdly that's not the reason it's bad. <laughs> oh no. Um I mean like the story is the, 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 there was an earthquake and now there's new Angeles, it's a post apocalyptic world. There's these two brothers with one half a dragon emblem, and then there's um the Terminator twos T one thousand with the other, who is now <laughs> Chinese for some reason. And he's got like a Chinese hairstyle and he wears Chinese clothes, even though he's white. And, and it <laughs> turns himself into paper a lot. Yeah, like, so there's there's obviously the medallion, which is the double dragon. Yeah. And it's two dragons, then kind of a yin and yang, and it splits off, and they have half, and obviously Robert Patrick Terminator has half. Yeah. Um, and each has a different power, so one's power over the body and one's power over the soul. And the way it's displayed the power of the soul is that, for some reason, I mean, the graphics are fucking dog shit. Oh, the is He turns... Like into like a black and white gif made out of paper, <laughs> and he kind of just like slushes and like yeah. vibrates like a fucking wet fucking towel being shook out, and then slinks into the ground and turns into a shadow. Yeah, <laughs> and he can like fly about as a shadow, and it's just what. What I loved is at the beginning, 
when you see them um, going to hunt the the first half of the um, of the medallion or the double dragon. It literally they're, they're literally it's like a bunch of samurai looking dudes are killing a bunch of monks who yeah. must obviously protect it. And it literally says it, 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 the description for the location somewhere in China. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just them fucking up a bunch of monks. And there's like. <laughs> There's this, like, you think it's a samurai. Just so you think it's a samurai dude with a whip, but it, obviously the big reveal is that it's a woman. Yeah. But that character has not only the, like, obviously, I love a character whose, like, basically theme is that they're just, like, an item. You know, like, odd job yeah. with his hat from, yeah. like, James Bond. So hers is that she's got a whip. But yeah. throughout the our film, without a whip, she literally can't do anything without a whip, basically. Uh -huh. And she's called... Linda Lash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't believe that. I was like, what? <laughs> like he refers to her as Lash, but then like it's just like listed in the credits as well. Linda Lash. Linda Lash. I'm like, yeah. That's a porn star name for a start. I love the fact that <laughs> oh it is like I love the fact that you stayed to the credits. I really applaud you for that because as soon as it rolled titles, I was fucking out, mate. I mean <laughs> well, I had to say if there was a bit at the end, you know what I mean? Oh, I wanted yeah, to know if there was sequel it's bait. Be a you know? Sequel bait, yeah. Um <laughs> It, I, oh. it's just hard to explain the movie because it's just all terrible i think there was it's one good terrible. joke that i laughed at unironically i can't even remember it i can't even remember the film and i watched it yesterday and i mean <laughs> super mario brothers is bad but i would yeah. prefer to watch super mario brothers again over this now yeah <laughs> Two... This was this was objectively worse than Super Mario oh, Brothers. It was. Like, it was. What two... is it about all the films that were watched? They're all post-apocalyptic. I know so far, I know. Like I've everything's been, been post-apocalyptic in the nineties. Like, I what's that it's, about? It's but yeah, like one of my biggest takeaways from the movie is it's like somebody it, it's like it was made today for like a million pound. And they put it they said it in the nineties and made everything really nineties. Mm -hmm. So their movie is very 90s of its time, of course, but it looks like they're pretending it's in the 90s. Yeah. So everyone's in like track suits and everyone's wearing like denim jackets around their waist and stuff. It's like it's overly 90s and it was set yeah. in the 90s and it was like they were trying too hard to be 90s when it was set yeah. in that era and was from that era. Yeah. It, it, it was just so over the top. Just, I love um, at the start when you get introduced to the brothers. So there's obviously the two brothers. Yeah. From the video game, um, was it Jimmy, Jimmy and Billy? Is it? I think so. I didn't write that name. I don't even down. remember their names. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Billy and Jimmy. Yeah. The that's... thing is, as well, is I'm a Double Dragon kid, so I grew up playing Double Dragon. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't have, um, because uh, I think Streets of Rage was on Sega at the time, Mega yeah. Drive, and I didn't have a Mega Drive. I had a Nintendo and a Super Nintendo. Um, so I, I love Double Dragon. Don't get us wrong. Like, but obviously, it's a dumb game with like you know not much story and stuff. Well, that's it. Yeah. But, and I did watch this as a kid because I definitely remember renting it because it's like, I remember bits of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the beginning, he introduced to the two brothers and they're in like a karate tournament and they're having some sort of like tag team karate match. Yeah. You know Which, what I mean? So they're like fight, they're fighting, but then they're like arguing amongst themselves and tagging out. Yeah. <laughs> just like, what the hell? And it's yeah. just like so weird. So then during, during the, um, the fight, an uh, earthquake aftershock happens because... Obviously, like you said, the whole the whole idea is that earthquakes happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So part of the city submerged and it's called instead of Los Angeles or whatever, it's called New Angeles. Tooth in the years two thousand and seven it's meant to be, which is hilarious. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> but there's like an earthquake aftershock happens. And I don't understand why. You just the, the announcer just goes, It's just an aftershock. And as if people should just be fine with it. And then you just see this like little midget guy go up to some sort of pump and he just starts pumping this like machine which i presume is meant to like release pressure for the aftershock or some shit or pump water out it's never explained and he's just pumping it and then they have the the they're having the karate fight and they get disqualified because billy cheats by like yeah. jumping on the guy's back and like giving him a fucking head scrape or whatever um and they get disqualified and then for some reason all of the crowd just go and all throw that popcorn and storm the ring <laughs> but i mean it's not a ring it's kind of like you know like a sumo ring where there's no barriers or whatever but like yeah just all storming. It's just like all this popcorn. Throw. I've never understood popcorn throwing anyway because I don't waste food. Yeah, I mean, why? Like, would you can you? tell your middle class what you're yeah. wasting food for. <laughs> <laughs> that goes in your face hole, not on the ground. But while, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But while they're all storming the scene, the little midget guy's still pumping away. <laughs> I'm just like, because I'm like, why though? What's yeah. he doing? Yeah, is that really? 
Poland? And would it not make sense to get a bigger, stronger guy to do the pump? Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe, maybe the director said to his mate, like, I'll get you in my film, don't worry. And he was just, <laughs> he was just like, what can he do? And then they just created this but scene for never, this little guy. It's never explained. It never, nothing ever Probably comes in dreams. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you just I'm just envisioning the dark like follow your dreams, little buddy. Pats him on his head and he's like pumping. He's like, this is my moment to shine. But yeah, it's just I, I, yeah, it's a police state, isn't it? So there's like a curfew at six yeah. o'clock and everyone has to be in. And then at six o'clock at night, um, crime the gangs comes up like, yeah, crime it's, like becomes, it's very purge. Yeah, it's it's, it's very, very like it's very purge. But every night instead of instead of once a yeah. year and yeah, like, so. I mean, it's like the different gangs and stuff. I get all that because they're in the game and you see it's like very, some of the characters from the game. It's very the Warriors. Like it had a very Warriors vibe to it where like there's all these themed gangs. So there's a gang yeah. literally called the Clowns. And they're wearing and then clown the, makeup and shit. Yeah, and then the yeah, worst gloves. named gang where you see one of the main characters in the film is the, he's from the worst named gang. They're called the Mohawks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, the barrier for entry is quite low. It is like, gang, isn't it? like. But imagine you if that? you don't want a Mohawk though, but you have to have one if you want to join the gang. Like, oh, I'm going to have a Mohawk, man. Yeah, I, I have to go with the fucking blonde tipped side part and gang instead. Yeah, that's like, it, yeah. I, I went with the quiff <laughs> boys. <the> spiky boys. <laughs> <laughs> so the there's a like boys. <laughs> yeah, so Good. there's like the leader of the Mohawks, who's this giant dude called um Bo a Bobo. Yeah. Which is like obviously one of the bosses in the game, essentially. Yeah. So in the game, obviously he's massive. Um and like in the game, his face is basically like a giant fucking circle. He's got it like is, a yeah. fucking moon face. Yeah. Um so in the game, he's just normal. Uh, in the game, sorry, rather in the film, he's just normal looking. But they're like, oh, but he can bench eight hundred pounds. I'm like, no, he can't. No, he can't. <laughs> he's 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 big. He's not that big. I mean, uh, the thing I noticed the most about him was he just he was breathing heavily all the time. Like he'd get out of the country. <laughs> <Yeah. sighs> I'm like, yeah. why is he doing? There was that? a lot of a lot of grunting. Yeah, a lot of grunting from this dude. And like I just I didn't understand like he's supposed to be imposing, but why is he yeah. doing the big breathing thing? It's like to me he's just out of <laughs> out of breath. I'm just gonna run around him till he gets tired and kick him in the nuts. Like that's not so scary. Was, yeah, it was just weird. There was like a lot of that. Um to kind of set up the scene, like they're late back from the karate tournament, so they're they're out after curfew. So they're driving along in their car, and it's never explained, but there's like during the karate scene, the, there's like a, an Asian woman who's like he thinks they're manager or something. Right. Because it's never explained at that point. Yeah. Um, who I think is just called Satori or something. Yeah. Um, and it's never explained that at that point who she is, but then they're in this like the family saloon, which is basically just like a normal like estate like car, but then it has like big bars on the outside that like power like a fiery exhaust. Yeah. Because obviously everything's cyberpunk kind of post apocalyptic Mad Max and and then they get caught out after after curfew, and then they see um, uh, what appears to be an attractive woman repairing a car. And obviously, yeah, that's, that's right, a ruse yeah. to get them to pull over, and that's when and the, it's mohawks the mohawks show up. Yeah. But this is just really to introduce you to like Bo a Bobo. And then they have like a chase scene, which is like, oh my God, the graphics in the chase scene. <laughs> At one point, they're being chased in the saloon by Bo Bobo, who's driving like a big truck. And he presses a button and like a stick with like a basically just a tiny little camera on, but it looks so shit, just like pops up and then starts going into fucking like really shit graphics. And it's like tactical tracker. And it's like yeah, and it's doing the outline really of the bad. car and all yeah. this shit. Oh <laughs> my God. Just, they have like a really cheese, cheesy fucking, well, speaking of cheesy, they have such a cheesy chasing that they're trying to get away that they use a can of like cheese in a can called Cheese Whiz, which I think is <laughs> yeah. a brand in America. Yeah. Um, they put a can of cheese whiz into the like tank and that gives them like a NOS like <laughs> boost to the car and the car's like flying out fueled entirely on cheese. Like, yeah, it's just I mean that's the type of car I want. Do you know what I mean? It's just an excuse to yeah. buy more cheese. I love me sell some cheese. My car needs it. But yeah, but you're still eating it, Paul. <laughs> I know, but it's for me car. Um so then they get saved by like a gang who are like they're the kind of so they're a gang who are out when the gangs are out after dark, but they're like against the gangs. Yeah, they're like an altruistic gang or whatever, and they're run by Alyssa Milano, which is just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I didn't get about Alyssa Milano was like she was kind of like the love interest, um, and like the kind of sexualized her in scenes where like you know the scenes where like yeah. she's wearing like stirrups essentially with her butt out essentially, mm -hmm. and they're like looking at her butt and all that and being like damn, and they're like kind of fighting over her. But then it's kind of also implied that she's like a child. Yeah, I know. It was very but like in the same vein. She's like strange. the police. She's like the captain of the police's daughter, oh, uh, and yeah. she's like 
pretending to just go to school and be normal through the day, but then just sneaking out at night to be the leader of an adult gang of... It's like the gang's like full of adults, but then it's but also protecting like children. lost children yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, what the fuck? I mean, as a kid, Alyssa Milano was, I think it was like every young boy that they always had somebody that had a crush on. Mine was Alyssa yeah. Milano. She was gorgeous. Yeah. She still is now. Uh, and yeah. so obviously as a kid seeing the movie, I was like, wow. And you don't see the like the predatory nature of the two it's, main characters yeah. because like she spends all like going through over, a grade and and they're like whoa I want to go first so I get to be <laughs> next to that ass like yeah, the fighting over who gets to go through the grade the, first so they these can are be supposed to be our heroes ours. and they're just like yeah but I want to bang our mate no let me I bang mean our. that's obviously you're not expecting anything out of a film like this but they no. were they were hugely unlikable characters like yeah. oh, and like anytime there was kind of any moment of emotion between the two where they were like you know trying to come to terms with like certain characters like satori dies yeah. in a scene so like like um like them trying to come to terms with that like neither of them come across as likable in that well that's sense. it yeah <laughs> you know like I mean? billy billy's like sat like upset and like looking out onto the ocean and then jimmy's yeah. like what are you doing get over it and like throws a box in there in the water yeah. and he's like <laughs> Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Like, well, uh, but it was what? like a box full of pictures and all yeah. this stuff and that. Uh -huh. And he's just like, he just yeets it into the ocean. Like, get over it. It's been three minutes, brother. Do you know what I loved is the look they lived in like an old cinema, like they lived in an old like movie theater. Yeah. Like, that was so cool. Like, that was a really good set because that yeah. probably was just an old movie theater that they actually rented. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, so prior to that scene where they're in the theater, though, um, Bo Bobo, who's failed obviously to capture them in the car chase scene, <laughs> for some reason, Gets transport, well, at least a lash, the whip girl, wraps and barely wraps the whip around his neck and then walks him downstairs to, like, this underground laboratory at um, Robert Patrick's headquarters or whatever. Yeah. And he also has two Asian henchmen who look the same and dress in, like... Yeah, Huey and Lewis. Of, yeah. yeah, Huey and Lewis, so they can make <laughs> Huey Lewis and the news jokes and yeah. shit. Um, they're, like... His henchmen, but you know what? They were carrying his pinkies, so they're yeah, sporting him. We're holding him in his hands, yeah. Because this guy is massive; he's got to be like six five or something. Yeah, and like they're like your typical Asian blokes; they're like five eight or something like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're tiny, and they're literally like holding his pinkies and walking him. So she's got the fucking whip just barely wrapped around his neck, walking him, and they're and they're holding his pinkies, and they're just like barely escorting him. Like he could throw all three of them. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently he can lift eight hundred pounds. They don't weigh fucking six That's the three of them to come back. Yeah. And and yeah, and they're walking into this chair where he's gonna be like tortured or some shit. Like you don't really know at this point. And he just like cuts to him screaming, he's like, ah, I'm thinking, I could throw them <laughs> three away. I, I'm not six five, I could throw them exactly. three. Exactly. Like, yeah, man. They're not even holding you, they're holding your pinky. <laughs> so anyway, he gets operated on and becomes and hilariously the list of them here is Bo a Bobo two. Yeah, because it's played by a different character. <laughs> it's played by a different actor, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally different actor. So, I mean, Mendel. Bo Bobo 2 is just him in a suit, isn't it? And the suit is like, he's all jacked up. He looks like a bit like Batman and Robin's Bane. Yeah. But like even bigger and worse. But with extra <laughs> testicles, yeah. And he's because yeah. that's what they look like. It looked like a nut yeah, sack. Traps look like balls, don't they? He's got that's all bulbous. They're like up to here. It's like yeah. he can barely move. The guy yeah. in the fucking suit can barely move. And he becomes dead slow and shit. And there's just a whole fight scene in the theatre where this is where Satori dies. <laughs> yeah. Having a whole fight scene. Um what's weird, right, is that Bo Bobo is about to get them. And then they get saved by Satori, who that at this point they think she's um well actually no, you don't you don't think she's dead. At this point no, she's been grabbed, yeah. she's been grabbed by Robert Patrick. So I'm like, eh, how the fuck is she there to yeah. save them? But then obviously it turns out because obviously Robert Patrick can turn into a, a bit of boy. paper and then <laughs> and turn into a fucking shadow. He's like went inside of her, the dirty bastard, and is now yeah. controlling Satori. So but then what he does is obviously he saves them from a bobo and then he tries to attack them yeah it makes no sense <laughs> because you're like he's on your side you've yeah. made him just let let him get the fucking yeah. well, that double dragon it, and you're it fine would've, it would have made more sense if he had have done that and then it half half the way through the film revealed that it was him the whole time and he grabs the amulet yeah but it's like he kicks bobo Bo into this into whatever it was and Off then Bo the stage, Bo yeah. Bo 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 goes daddy and then he's like <laughs> oh by the way i'm the bad guy and then he yeah, it's and just the, it's just instantaneous. It's like two frames later. Actually, like, yeah, I'm Robert Patrick, bro. Like, give us the double dragon em yeah. emblem thing or whatever it's called. Amulet. They also did the same thing twice, which really this like irrationally annoyed us. Was he trapped Satori in a cage though, where the door was like locked? 
Yeah. And then it was like, oh, he's setting fire to the theater so that she's, they're going to have to leave her and she's going to burn in the theater alive. Yeah. But then she, the, she, they just kind of pull on the door and she kicks the door and the door opens. So she's out. Yeah. And then, like, a few seconds later, like, they run out the theater, but then she shuts the fire escape behind them. So that's just trapped, mm. kind of hoping to trap Rob Patrick, but obviously he just gets away. And then she gets trapped inside the theater and burns alive anyway. And it's just like, why didn't you just yeah. do that when she was already trapped? Just leave it where they had to make the choice to run away or something. Well, that's shit. it, yeah. Because it was like the, the, she was like out of danger and then immediately back in it. So it takes By immediately. Yeah, like it's literally <laughs> seconds. She's like, oh my God, they got her out. That's really good. She's not going to die. And then she's like, no, but I have to stay here and chin paper boy. And then locks the door. And then he just like does this amulet thing, rubs his hands, goes into a paper wavy thing and yeah. then disappears. And then does all that. When he, when he disappears, he, he leaves obviously as the shadow. He goes across a piano and like runs all yeah, the like, like, across the <laughs> Piano. Like, I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> and then he laughs. He's like, hey, hey, piano. <laughs> piano. I'm a piano. I am. I'm the piano man. It's just like, all right. <laughs> you know the thing that I love about the whole film is that effect is so bad, but they continuously show you that effect. Like, if they show it once, you've seen it once, you know what he's doing. Okay, if he's inside yeah. somebody else, you know he's done. He's rubbed his hands. He's went waving yeah, gave uh, that boy. But they're but like, they're no, no, we're going to keep showing that effect the whole film. Like, they, he chokes what's that weird guy, as well as yeah, and and like it's the shadow of him choking him, and this guy's just going, <laughs> yeah. and then and then it's like wavy <gasps> paper boy again. Like, stop showing this yeah. really bad effect. It's not good. Why do you keep doing it? <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Bad. What what what's hilarious is it's like a trope of the film is that he knows how to activate the power in his half of the dragon but the brothers don't know how to activate yeah. this yeah several times in the film they see him rub his hands together with the amulet in his hands and change it's like quite clearly obviously <laughs> yeah. what he does to activate just do that yeah just see try like that six times like yeah because like, like, they, they do eventually rub it and then like someone's got one of those things that spin around um, I can't remember what they're called. I used to call them UFO boys because you yeah, just you know, it? Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. yeah. And like, I, I I said to myself like before that I was like, you saw what Robert Patrick did. Just one of you put it on and do that, and you know Bob's <laughs> your uncle. But it takes like all the way through the film, and then he throws it away. And like, is that what it is? It, has it got like one of those abandonment kinks where it's like as soon as you <laughs> threw it away, it's like, oh well, I'll come back to you now and work. You know what I mean? It's like, please, Daddy, I'll I'll stop. Like, yeah, I just I just didn't so... understand the logic in it at all. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's like breathtakingly bad. Where yeah. like I just, like I said earlier, it's like kind of like the warriors with the gangs, and that was the only thing that I enjoyed. Like this is my favorite scene by far. Was there's like, well, it's like kind of a two in one scene. There's like you said, like a warrior style gang meet where all the gangs are meeting, and um, Robert Patrick's like I'm the new leader, sort of thing, and he chokes the the leader that's there. It's a shadow, like you said. Yeah. Um. So like that's like that's cool, but then it leads to like obviously that means the gang is now going to break the curfew, yeah, and go after the guys through the day when they're not supposed to. So there's a scene where obviously the they're essentially like you say they're getting over Satori dying four seconds ago. It's been four <laughs> seconds, so Jimmy's annoyed that Billy's still upset about losing. Yeah, who's essentially that surrogate mother? Yeah, who's like it. apparently brought them up and shit. And, and he's just like, it's been four seconds, dude. Get on with yeah, it. You know what I mean? Like, he eats all of our belongings. <laughs> in the fucking ocean. And then they're walking by the river. And um, then the, they're just like presented with all the gangs. And they're, it's, a, it's such a classic gang scene because it pans out and there's all these different people from different gangs wearing the outfit. And they're doing the classic like punching their hands, patting back yeah. in their hands, swinging a chin. <laughs> and the best one is it's just a last dress as a schoolgirl with a bag, a backpack, just swinging it around her head. <laughs> I re watched it six times. I was like, what's she doing? I'm going to hit us with our school books. Like, am I yeah. supposed to be more? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. That's, that's well, they're like swinging oh. chins and patting bats and like clenching their fists and all these fierce and books. And then there's like a fucking 12 year old kid swinging a bag yeah. around their head. Like, it's got a thesaurus in this. I'm going to fucking do you. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is power. Like, oh, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Oh fucking hell! So yeah. the best. So they have that. That whole scene is just brilliant. So they have yeah. a scene where they're like fighting through the gangs, and it's very cheesy, and they're like opening car doors and guys and flipping it. Yeah. And the best bit is there's a guy who's like above them on some sort of building, and he's dressed as a postman because there's a postman themed gang. Yeah, of course. So it's like. There's a bunch of postmen who have obviously risen up and they're just sick of it, but he's still wearing his outfit and he's got his back. <laughs> and he jumps off to like kind of jump on them and loads of like 
like fucking letters are falling as he's falling through the air. <laughs> he shouts, <laughs> it's like special delivery, and jumps off and he goes, Emil! <laughs> Do you know what it's I love so about it? Like, the way you described it is like he's they'd risen up and they've become a gang. They're still collecting postal. Do you know what I'm mean? collecting postal? <laughs> they're still going to the depot. They want that wage. So they're gonna get that they're gonna get that with that post. They're not gonna post it, but they're still gonna get paid. <laughs> and he's still got I, uh, what a guy! Like. And his insults are post post fucking band theme. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> Emil, it's like oh. it's like postman Pat coming over and slapping him, going postman slap. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, what do you mean? <laughs> so oh, they end up like they're being chased by the gang, and they run down to the back to the riverside and end up in a boathouse. And the yeah. boathouse has this like really fancy looking motorcycle in. And I'm just like, how? Like this is like the trampiest like boathouse ever, where they're like. The gang are like punching holes through the fucking wall in the post house and that. And he gets on the motorbike and the motorbike falls apart hilariously so that they can reveal that there's a... F- what is this fucking boathouse? Because not only does it have a motorbike in, but it also has a speedboat in. Yeah. <laughs> so then they jump in a speedboat and you get the weirdest speedboat chase scene. Yeah, when they set like, fire to the, to, the, to the river as well. Yeah. Yeah, but like... It- they're on the speedboat, and then two guys show up on jet skis, and I'm like, where did they come from? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? It's like, you know, like in a video game where there's a chase scene, like 50 cars are chasing you. Yeah. You're like, there wouldn't be this many cars. It was like that. I was like, fuck yeah. off. <laughs> they, tried, they tried to take the, the video game tropes into the movie, and again, it's it's still terrible. It's absolutely did ridiculous. Read, uh, did you read the trivia about the um, them setting fire to the war? Uh, on IMDb, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, always so like IMDb, these, yeah. So that they use seven hundred gallons of gasoline and yeah. two hundred gallons of alcohol for an explosion at that yeah. <laughs> that kind of end scene, uh-huh. and apparently they had to announce it on the news. And yeah, there was there was still people calling the police because they were yeah, that's were terrifying. Thing. Like, I think it's great that they're doing a practical effect because obviously back then CGI yeah. wasn't that great. But I mean, that's a lot of uh, of stuff to use for for a, a three second scene. Like it's, it's insane. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really such, is. Considering such a, a massive explosion, it's such an underwhelming moment. In the, yeah. Like, oh yeah. The whole movie just, is like though. an explosion. It's like over in a flash, and you're like, what? Yeah. Like. The one thing I will say is Mark, I can't remember, I can't pronounce his last name, Descacaucus De- De- or something like that. I do apologize. Yeah, the guy out of um, yeah. John Wick. Yeah. He knows his stuff with, with like martial arts and you can see that in the movie. I, yeah. I, I, I literally, after watching that, I watched another film of his called Drive. And right. it, it, it's, it's a decent enough movie. I saw it when I was a kid and I watched it again and it still holds up. It's pretty good. Um, He, he knows his stuff, but... The brother, you can tell, doesn't. So, like, yeah. they'll cut from him doing a kick, and then they'll cut to the brother doing a kick, and it's just, it's just night and day the difference. Yeah. So I they will just say, like, the brother because he was handsome. That was, well, it. That's it was it, yeah. like a typical that's handsome it. protagonist. Like nowadays, they put them through like boot camps and stuff to get them to learn yeah. kung fu and, and what have you. Um, but you could just tell the difference. Like that guy, Mark, the, that guy, he did mm-hmm. amazing in the like the martial arts side of things. Yeah. But then they made him the bad guy. And Billy, the the good guy, but then he was like doing terrible martial arts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so you were focused <laughs> yeah. on the one who wasn't good at doing the martial arts. Yeah. And, it, it, and I personally think it should have been the other way around because it was it was just <laughs> yeah. it was terrible, man. Really bad. <laughs> it really was. I like the scene where Alyssa Milano is torturing Bo Bobo with like because because basically after he yeah so after he's obviously like um been defeated in the theater he gets captured and. Obviously, she's she's a child. Yeah, she's like a, ch- a child character, and like, but she's the leader of this gang, and they've got him tied up, and she's overfeeding him spinach. It's like a torture. Like, yeah, <laughs> she's basically waterboarding him with spinach. I'm <laughs> just like, what the fuck is this film? And he's like burping. And he's like, oh. and then what? What's the bit later on when they're back at Robert Patrick's headquarters, and then they're back in the basement where Boo 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 was created, and then all of a sudden, just like a zombie basketball player's fighting them. I don't know. Like, what is- <laughs> Was, was, was that a genuine on, like, basketball player for that yeah, time? It was, and it was like a cameo. Yeah. Is that what that I was? I think it was. Yeah, because it I was, was just yeah. like, what? what because what, I'm like, why is he? Why? Because I mean, obviously he was a fucking giant, but he was wearing a basketball outfit as yeah. well. He had like the the basketball jersey on and everything. I was just yeah. like, okay. It, but the whole movie's that though. It's just weird scenes and then like weird things in said scenes. Like uh. the. the the Robert Patrick choking that mutant guy or whatever he's supposed to be. Like, <laughs> yeah. why didn't you just choke him? And why was everybody on board after he choked him? As a shadow. <laughs> All the guys were like, said, yeah, yeah. Like, like, 
Why? It made no sense. Like, I'm the leader of the Killed gang one, now. Dude. And they're like, why? And he's just like, no, you're not. And he, tra- he strokes him out and he's like, yeah, okay. Well, now we'll break the curfew. And- yeah. Because <laughs> like, I mean- <laughs> all of those people could have stamped Robert Patrick, but they were all yeah. like, oh, well, he killed one guy. We're on board. It's it's just ludicrous, man. It really is. It's. Just, I it- like that, um, <laughs> the fucking scene where Bo 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 goes from being a bad guy to a good guy. Yeah. Because when she's torturing him, she's like, why are you defending? Like, why won't you tell where his secret sort of thing? Because he's tortured you. Yeah. And it's kind of implied in that he doesn't understand that this has happened to him. Yeah. Because there's a scene where he sees his reflection and he cannot believe that's what he looks like. Yeah. And that turns him from bad guy to good guy. Yeah. But I'm like, you're telling me he, can't, he doesn't know that he hasn't noticed he cannot fucking turn his head. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he thought he was like, in like a Batman costume. Ball, with these ball shoulders. He's yeah. just like... Uh, can you smell balls? Where <laughs> it smells like sweaty balls wherever I am. And they're a bit burnt because he's burnt, yeah. isn't he? He is. It smells he's... like burnt scrum. Do you know? Like, like... And if anybody smell that burnt scrum, it's you, Bobo. Bo, but it's not, man. It just follows me around. I think Bobo Bo actually translates directly to burnt scrum. Bo, burnt scrum. It is. It's his native name. Yeah, it definitely is. But I yeah, like that at the end when they uh, unite the two medallions, and then <laughs> that makes Robert Patrick split off into two. Demons exact copies swords. of like shit buffy looking bom- bom- <laughs> monster vampire things like with swords and then ensues yeah. the most boring fight scene ever yeah. i think it's basically because they didn't obviously robert patrick didn't learn any martial arts for the movie yeah. so they couldn't really have him do the martial arts so they yeah. just put obviously two martial artists in these buffy looking motherfucking yeah. demon costumes and yeah, I mean, it it just made no sense. You would think he'd be like this all powerful dude now, and you could just kick their ass, and you'd see that. But it just he splits them off into two demons, and then they beat the demons, and then he possesses Robert Patrick. Jimmy He's like, "I've been a naughty boy. Have twelve million pounds, please arrest well, I me." Thought, well, like, was what was like? That's a, probably the last thing I want to comment on because I just think it was just so. <laughs> it's like <laughs> this guy is. It, it comes out that Robert Patrick killed that dad. Yeah. So Robert Patrick's murdered that father. Yeah. And then at the end, like he goes inside of him, like, you know, like, no, like no. possesses him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and then he just starts slapping. He's like, Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you? But just slapping him. Like, he killed your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Why are you hitting yourself? Oh, yeah. he's a naughty boy. He yeah. murdered your father. <laughs> He like, killed your father and he killed and your surrogate mother. Yeah. And you're just like, naughty boy, naughty boy. And you know like, why? You know why? Because four seconds after his dad died, he was like, he got over it. Didn't yeah, he? well, he did. He just he, he <laughs> stuff into the ocean. He's like, I'm over it. His dad stuff into the ocean. <laughs> All his dad's prized fucking trophies. Yeah. He's just like, Switch. He's like, I'm all this. I mean, it, I, I'm starting to think that Jimmy might be a psychopath who just has feelings for nobody. He's like, it was four minutes ago. What are you crying for? But yeah, like, the, the comeuppance is like, well, I'm going to write a big check to the police and you can arrest us. Like, you murdered your dad. You've got all this power. Yeet him into the ocean. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so that was double dragon? Yeah. I mean, fiery scrotum. Uh. That's, that's, I'd rather <laughs> set fire to me scrotum than watch this again. <laughs> it was weird because when you'd said about the Super Mario Brothers review, like, I never want to watch this again. I was like, I'd watch that again because yeah. it was so dumb. It was fun. I would not watch this again. Nah, nah. Oh, I'm done. Like, I'm done. I had yeah. to watch it in two parts. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. I've watched 45 minutes. I'll come back. It was an hour and 29 minutes and it yeah. still felt longer than the Batman. <laughs> it genuinely did. <laughs> so that seems like the perfect place to end. So, you yeah. know, thank you very much for watching. Find one all major podcast platforms pretty much and yeah. YouTube. Yes, please do. And uh, thanks for watching.